hello to everyone following the stream here for round number six here at Clay Pigeon Car Club 2016 season. We will have three more rounds commencing after this one in a beautiful sunny day here of uh, August here in this clay round. We'll be underway shortly with the Honda Cadets. So here we are then, where we'll be shortly underway with the Honda Cadets, the first race of the day, and their first heat. And once again, a huge grid, a spinner here just on the uh, warm-up lap from relatively high up the field. Looks like there was a bit of contact. Honda Cadets will be underway shortly and on pole position we have Sonny Smith, the number 95. He'll be alongside Thomas Brown on the front row. Row 2 will consist of Edward Leader and Jed Murphy with Theo uh, Mikoris and Charlie Vaughan on row 3. Jake Adams and Daniel Beards will be on 7th and 8th place and rounding out the top 10. Ewan Charman and Luke Rendell for the first race of the day. They'll head towards the accelerating line now start to get going and we will be underway with the eight minutes plus one lap heats that we will see throughout the day no difference uh, with the juniors or the seniors as far as i'm aware it's a good start for sonny smith the pole sitter number 95 good start and he is now leading the race managed to maintain that pole position trying to get the inside though the third placed cart and uh, looks like it might have been Edward Leader. Is he up? No, it's number 74. So that's Theo Mercurius has made a good start up into second position already. Again, a good few positions from the grid. And now threatening the race leader, Sonny Smith, who, uh, as we know, very talented youngster, has had a very good couple last meetings. He'll be hoping to maintain that uh, form that he's been showing. But Mercurius up the inside. And it looks like... Mick Horis, who uh, um, I haven't, don't recognise that name, so whether this is his debut at Clay or not, I uh, 
could well be mistaken there. Apologies if that is the case, but he does now take the race lead and uh, is ahead of Sonny Smith, the number 95, who maybe just didn't see that one coming. The number 22 of Edward Leader in third position is uh, a little bit behind the number 95, Sonny Smith. A small gap has formed between them. And uh, then it goes back to the number 17 of Charlie Vaughan, who's also threatening to go up the inside of Leader. And Vaughan does do so, goes up the inside, the entrance into Billy's and uh, into the S's they pour once more the carts Charlie Vaughan now up into third place can he do anything about Sonny Smith who's going back up the inside of McCorris goes up the inside and uh, can he maintain the position no he can't he uh, just couldn't quite make that move stick going into the hairpin there going back out of the horseshoe McCorris has the lead once more and heading into the top bend down the start finish straight and it is McCorris who leads the way Sonny Smith in second place still that gap is maintained between them and third place who is Edward Leader Ethan Leader has also managed to find his way up into fifth you know, something's happened to uh well, no Charlie Vaughan sorry is in third place but fourth Edward Leader and then Ethan Leader in fifth position sixth still Ewan Charman hasn't made the worst start in the world Jed Murphy has gained a position up into seventh place Jake Adams fallen down to eighth and Luke Randall and Sean Cuss make out the top 10 as things stand. As they head their way back into the top end once more. Hurtling down the pit straight with that tailwind that could help so many carts today. Especially with the, uh, the optimal conditions that we have here today. Maybe a little bit too warm but certainly some very good conditions to go racing in. Still, Sonny Smith unable to do anything about the race leader Theo McCorris who is leading the way and doing a good job at the moment as uh, he attempts to defend from Smith for the remaining time 4 minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock and uh, slowly that gap is disappearing between Sonny Smith and Charlie Vaughan for third place that could really turn into a battle for second there Vaughan in third at the moment and he doesn't have much pressure from behind him his closest rival the number 27 Ethan Leader who is in fourth but uh, he is also over a second uh, behind third place of Charlie Vaughan. So Charlie Vaughan not having to worry about that at the moment. But it's a squabble going on between Edward and Ethan Leader. Battling for fourth place. Don't want to uh, tangle together of course. Number 22 and 27. But uh, still got Ewan Charman right on their case. In behind in the number 42 white cart we can see there. Making their way into buttons and into the top bend. Down the pit straight they come once more for the sixth time. Nakora is still doing a good job of holding that lead at the moment with Smith in second and third place. Charlie Vaughan now very much not a gap between second and third. That is a very much a group of three now as they make their way into the hairpin. And sweeping into the horseshoe once more. They all look to try and suss out each other's game plan to get the optimum amount of points you can get for the first heat. 30 points. All of the points of the heats will then add together to give you a grid position for the final later on where the most points are up for grabs for the championship. Uh, all three of the carts who are at the top three at the moment you could potentially see as pole sitters later on. Well, we shall see. But the first heat, a good indication of the early pace sitters here. McCorris does still lead though at the moment. Sonny Smith in second place with Charlie Vaughan in third. There's contact warning for the number 27. That's Ethan Leader in fifth position. Got to be careful not to be intertwined with too many other collisions like that or he could be in trouble. But uh, Ethan Leader does have that warning now but he is quite far behind that leading three who are opening up that gap each and every lap that uh, gap opening Ethan Leader actually does look like he has in fact closed that uh, margin somewhat on that previous lap now Edward Leader and Murphy still very close in that battle for fourth there's a yellow flag waving 
uh, down at the hairpin. Looks like there was a cart off momentarily. Might have been one of the leading trio, actually. This one might be Charlie Vaughan going by the uh, paintwork. It is indeed Charlie Vaughan, so he's gone off at the hairpin. Looks like he's rejoined the race, though. Is okay, but has lost many positions and a lot of time. Still a battle between the top two, though. Sonny Smith and McCorris. McCorris goes up the inside. Smith unable to defend that move going into Billy's blind. And Sonny Smith will have to do it all again now. But uh, there is now a fairly large gap going back uh, to third place. Third place now, Ethan Leader having been gifted that position. Charlie Vaughan down in 11th now, losing eight positions as a result of that incident. But Ethan Leader is in third, fourth place. Edward Leader. Ollie Tyler gained two positions on that previous lap to find himself up into fifth. Jed Murphy, sixth, seventh. Ewan Charman and Sean Cuss in eighth. Jake Adams, ninth, tenth. Luke Rendell, as things stand, with uh, just one minute and three seconds to go. The top two look like they're uh, getting away from the rest of the field, though. Ollie Tyler, well, it's a very similar gap. Uh, to be honest, between second and third, maintaining, but uh, a 40.71 is the fastest lap at the moment, set by Ollie Tyler. That is significantly quicker than um, the, well, most of the field, actually, when you look at that. 40.71, McCorris and Sonny Smith have fastest laps of a 40.82 and 81, respectively, so uh, about a tenth slower on fastest lap, so it looks like, in terms of pace, it is uh, Ollie Tyler who holds that advantage, but uh, it's about position on the field, ultimately, and uh, hopefully for him, when he gets better grid positions, he'll be able to maybe find himself even further on the field, regardless of the fact that third is still a remarkably good position, considering Ollie Tyler didn't have, uh, well, he must have had his low or at least mid-table grid start in this particular round. Number 42 there, swinging out a bit wide. That's Ewan Charman, slightly wide. Doesn't lose any positions, but has lost... A bit of time as Sonny Smith battles McCorris to try and regain the lead that he held towards the start of the race and then a little bit later on but uh, has lost it and at the moment it's looking good for the young Theo McCorris in the number 74. Charlie Vaughan hasn't made any progress from 11th place, unfortunately for him. Hasn't uh, found himself further up the field since that incident. Um, lucky for him that he's had that incident, but uh, checkered flag does come out and uh, is waved for McCorris, who takes the first win of the day ahead of Sonny Smith, who might find himself a bit surprised in the number 95. That... Uh, Considering his form of late, which has been blistering, Ollie Tyler comes across the line in third, fourth, Ethan Leader, Jed Murphy takes fifth, sixth, Sean Cuss, Edward Leader takes seventh, eighth, Ewan Charman, Jake Adams takes ninth, and rounding out the top ten, Luke Rendell, Charlie Vaughan, wrapped up in that incident just a few laps from the end in the number 17, comes in 11th place, but uh, it looks like Theo McCurris will be happy with that result, the first win of the first seat of the Honda Gadets today. Sonny Smith in the number 95 takes second position ahead of a very quick and racy looking Ollie Tyler in third. Takes the fastest lap by uh, almost an entire tenth of a second. Uh, just under nine hundredths of a second his fastest lap. Uh, quicker than the next fastest man but it looks like that is the end of the race. The carts enter the pit lane and uh, we will be getting underway with race number two shortly. Minimax and Junior TKM will be out for race number two, followed by the Senior Max in race number three.
So it looks like we are going to be underway now with the Minimax and the Junior TKM. On the front row, Andy Ward and Amelia Vincent with Thomas Martin and Tyler Trotter on row two. But uh, we have James Crossley, Tom Adams going across the line uh, in pole position on the actual field as the grid I was given. But uh, looks like have got the entrance uh, a little bit different here. Got ten entrance on screen nine there. So... Uh, Now racing though, James Crossy from the front row. So leading the Minimax race at the moment, the number 42 from the uh, front row, James Crossley, Tom Adams in the number 57 in an early second position. Has he managed to get past, not yet, yeah, it's number 85 in fact, Will Uphill, who has taken the lead now. Bit of confusion there, sorry, but uh, Tom Adams is in second place. Uh, fortunately, all the yellow... Uh, flags out here, two carts off down in Billy's Blind. Looks like they were involved in that incident together. We're almost back to back there in the uh, tyre wall of Billy's, but uh, one of the carts unable to get going again and is now in the tyre wall. So, uh, unfortunately for him, I won't be able to get going again. A bit too far away for me to be able to see in my uh, commentary box position, but uh, I'll be able to confirm as they cross the line. Yellow flags waving, so no overtaking in that sector. Reach the next marshal post, and they are now allowed though. But it is Tom Adams who takes the lead, number 57. And I can confirm that it is Michael Salmon who uh, was involved in that incident and hasn't been able to get going again. James Crossley was involved, but uh, has rejoined the back of the field, number 42, significantly far behind seventh place. Joseph Hockwood, who is the nearest competitor to him. in the lead at the moment is Tom Adams under a bit of pressure from Oakley Pryor, the number 66 and Harrison Collins is in third position and also threatening those top two. 85 will up, he'll then have the best previous lap losing those positions from the lead but uh, is still in for a shout. The top four certainly aren't done and dusted with yet even if will up, he'll is about half a second behind third place and uh, you would imagine maybe it could just be a battle between the top three but still a lot of time left in this race four minutes 45 seconds but uh, Oakley Pryor with the e-plated car today he's running that e-plate meaning he's the English he's the English championship so uh, good for the youngster there the number 66 also running the e-plate but uh, number 57 of Tom Adams has he been overtaken now? I believe he has. Oakley Pryor now in the lead. In that E-plated car, Tom Adams just in behind. Will Uphill in fourth place. Still trying to get on the back of Harrison Collins, who's, uh, well, Collins not quite, not quite in the uh, battle for the top two. He's, uh, he's really there, but I just can't see him really making a move at the moment but uh, well we will see as time goes on in this race certainly has a good opportunity early on here it seems to have the pace of the top two prior and adams as we know both very quick experienced drivers in this class we move into billy's blind and once again into the s's for their eighth lap Three minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock. And Oakley Pryor at the moment, he will just be looking to run that time down. Tom Adams behind him, but uh, if he can just keep the number 57 at bay, then he'll be on his way to a first 
Heat win. Into the S's they go once more of the half a mile long track. Yeah, Clay Pigeon, yellow flags waving once again. Uh, this time at the hairpin, it's a uh, cart off there. It looks like it might be Joseph Hopwood. It is indeed the number 33 off uh, the exit of the hairpin. And um, he was involved in an incident earlier on in the race, was able to get going again. But it looks like this time he hasn't been so lucky and he joins Michael Salmon in the retirement so far of this race so we have seven carts still running then with the minimax and the junior tkm although in fact it was hockwood who was the only junior tkm running today the rest are minimax so hockwood even though he is actually out of the race he will still get maximum points and uh, effectively a win for the junior tkm due to him being the uh, only one out there today. Hopefully we'll see a few more uh, over the next coming months. But Hawkwood is out of the running for the Junior TKM, leaving Minimax the only running class out on track. And Oakley Pryor does lead that class at the moment with 1 minute and 40 seconds to go. Tom Adams, since being in second place, hasn't really had an opportunity to overtake and hasn't put his cart in an overly attacking position, just holding on and seeing if he can maybe force the number 66 into a mistake though the number uh, 96 of Harrison Collins has dropped off somewhat now from the top two and could in fact be under a bit more pressure from Will Uphill. Uphill is always there or thereabouts towards the top end of the field and um, another Uphill now can make a potential pass for third place we will see but uh, still time left for each of these drivers try and improve on their position or in the case of Oakley Pryor in the E-plated cart out the front to just hold off Tom Adams for the remaining time just 45 seconds left on the clock now as he head down the pit straight once more across the timing line they go and into Billy's blind and once again into the Yetis if you want to be involved with the day on Twitter Hashtag CPKC2016 as always. Make sure you get involved. You'll be uh, featured on the live feed, of course, featured on the various screens around the circuit, and uh, you'll be able to see that on the uh, Alpha Timing feed and also on the stream on YouTube. Hashtag CPKC2016. Tweet how your day is going as a competitor or as a spectator's point of view. But, uh, at the moment, we can see no time left on the clock and Oakley Pryor and Tom Adams will go around one more time at the end of this lap went over the timing line just before the clock hit zero so they will have one more lap after this one down into buttons around into the top bend once again that sweeping bend where such a crucial point in the track to get such a good exit so you have the maximum speed possible heading down the longest straight off the circuit. Pit straight, that left hand kink, and then into Billy's blind. Sweeping right hand corner into the S's and the two carts in the lead of the race now find themselves in the hairpin. Heading down the very short distance towards a horseshoe now as they make their way round. Number 33 of Joseph Hockwood. His uh, cart... being pushed to safety there going to go across the circuit now but the checkered flag is out and that is a win for the e-plated Oakley Pryor just ahead of Tom Adams it was a battle till the end but Oakley Pryor could just about hold on and uh, the carts will all make their way back to the pit lane to conclude race two and the heat one for the Minimax but a good win there for the e-plated Oakley Pryor to start off his deck. However, he did not get the fastest lap. Tom Adams took the fastest lap at 35.99. The only driver to get under the uh, 36 second mark, but uh, Oakley Pryor only a 36.02. So not that much in it, but uh, going on fastest lap. Tom Adams, indeed, a very 
very uh, quick in the early stages could be already between those two later on but we shall see some competitors still could very much be in the mix there next up though we will have the senior max race number three it will be uh, coming up very shortly so um, in that race just to confirm Oakley Pryor taking the win Tom Adams second third Harrison Collins and Will Uphill takes fourth but uh, next up we will have the senior max ready for their first heat of the day and Andy Ward will be on pole next to Amelia Vincent with Thomas Martin and Tyler Trotter in row two. Senior Max, he won. And looks like we are about to go. So the grids go now. And Andy Ward with Amelia Vincent on the front row. And we are now underway with this race. Heading down the Sturmy Straight for the first time. Heading down into the Horseshoe. Looks like it was a... Uh, the hairpin, sorry, now into the horseshoe, but uh, as they make their way round, it looks like it was a good start for Amelia Vincent in the number 74 from uh, the front row, but on the outside of the grid, often very hard to get a good start from that position, but uh, Vincent has capitalised very much on uh, that start of the race, the number 69 of Thomas Martin also following through uh, from third place on the grid, but finds himself now up behind Amelia Vincent into second position. Tyler Trotter also getting a good start, gaining two positions up into third now, the number 99, but a terrible start for Andy Ward, the number 19. Started on pole position and now dead last, so uh, obviously a bit unlucky there with the early lap in uh, the senior max race here, but uh, Amelia Vincent is in the lead. At the moment, the only competitor to her, there's already a gap forming between second and third. That gap on the previous lap already over a second, over 1.3 seconds, in fact, 1.34 the gap between second and third as they went over the line that time by. But uh, that lap could, that gap, sorry, could well decrease. Gary Ford, the number 54, is ahead of Harriet Styles, and we know how quick Harriet Styles has been over the last uh, couple months, including that very impressive win of course I think three two three months ago now but uh, she could certainly show us what she can do here today in the senior max with a slightly smaller grid than we have seen over the last couple months that doesn't mean we will see any worse racing Gary Ford though at the moment looks like he's going to be the most likely competitor to close in with the top two as Thomas Martin goes up the inside of the horseshoe and he does indeed go past Emilia Vincent into the lead of the race. Thomas Martin in the green and orange overalls and cart finds himself in the lead of the race ahead of the number 74. 54 Gary Ford is in third position and fourth place Harriet Styles is ahead of uh, Oliver Holden as we know another very quick driver the number 23. Ryan Hodge is uh, in sixth position in the novice and uh, Lee Hodge meanwhile has the fastest lap of the race at 35-1-5 sitting in seventh position another novice uh, presumably but to no uh, knowledge related to Ryan Hodge I don't know whether that is the case or not but uh, 52 and 25 reverse numbers so uh, I'll be told okay they are brothers so uh, two brothers there the Hodge brothers 52 and 25 the reverse numbers both novices but at the moment Lee Hodge, who oh, did have the fastest lap of the race. Very impressive in these early stages. Andy Ward and Tyler Trotter, 8th and ninth. 
But uh, it is Thomas Martin in the lead of the race. And Amelia Vincent hasn't really been able to threaten uh, Tom Martin since he's uh, got into the lead of the race. That maybe has dropped off just a slight amount on the... Uh, on race pace but I'm sure she'll be really willing her car to be able to catch up to the back of the number 69 once more Thomas Martin though on his way to a first win of the day as things stand with uh, just under four minutes to go just over halfway through the race now including that one extra lap at the end of the race and still that gap between the second and third remains Despite the top two overtaking well, one another, well, Thomas Martin getting past Amelia Vincent at least. Gary Ford is up into third now. Fourth place, Oliver Holden. He's managed to get past Harriet Stiles for fourth position. Can he do anything about the number 54, Gary Ford, which Stiles was unable to do? Looks like Stiles could, in fact, be struggling with pace early on here. Isn't threatening Holden since losing that position, but is, in fact, uh, maybe struggling to uh, actually stay ahead of the novices of Ryan and Lee Hodge respectively in 6th and 7th. Andy Ward is in 8th and 9th. Tyler Trotter at the back, so Andy Ward has made some progress since going uh, towards the back on the first lap. But Tyler Trotter at the back of the field in the number 99 and some way behind the rest of the field as well. 3.7 seconds separating 8th and 9th. Thomas Martin, though, looking relatively comfortable for him at the moment. Probably a commentator's curse, and uh, he'll now, like, not finish the race or something. But uh, hopefully for him, he will. Amelia Vincent in second position. A little way behind, just ever so slightly uh, losing time on that previous lap. 0.05 of a second she lost out on on that uh, previous lap. So Thomas Martin just edging that gap ever so slightly each lap and uh, that is a very good method of course for a race leader if they're opening up their lead each and every lap Vincent is in second position third place Oliver Holden has managed indeed to get past Gary Ford now Looks like that gap between second and third is being depleted, and in fact, it was on the last lap. Half a second was taken out of a gap between Vincent and Holden, and Oliver Holden now not too far behind Amelia Vincent in second position. That one minute and 25 seconds couldn't go fast enough for the number 74, with Oliver Holden now breathing down her neck or certainly will be within the imminent last few laps Thomas Martin does lead though Amelia Vincent is in second place Oliver Holden third and suddenly the battle that was for the lead has changed from a battle between two cars to a battle between three. Gary Ford hasn't been able to catch up with the top three and remains in fourth place, squabbling with uh, Ryan Hodge, who has managed to get past Harriet Styles. Technical flag for the number 69, Thomas Martin. So uh, a technical flag for the race leader, and he will have to come into the pits. Well, I said about the commentator's curse, but... Uh, Seems that really is the case then. The race leader will have to go to the pit and uh, does the right thing, lets the two carts go past. Must be devastating for the number 69 when you're leading a race like that and then uh, have to go into the pits due to a technical error with the cart. But uh, is a proper squabble for the lead now. Oliver Holden tries to go the inside in the horseshoe, going past Harriet Styles. Thomas Martin will just be really, really hoping or wishing that his uh, cart didn't have those technical errors but uh, hasn't actually gone into the pit the last lap board is out so 
maybe he'll just uh, go to the end of the race with the last lap board out. Two laps to go. You can see the logic behind just continuing. But uh, nonetheless, Oliver Holden now in the lead of the race has managed to get past Amelia Vincent, having closed her down over the last few laps, and rapidly so, the number 23. Past the lap of the race as well, 34.77, blisteringly quick from uh, the young Senior Max driver. No one else has even got below the 35.1 mark yet, yeah, below the uh, 34.7, but the checker flag does go, and Oliver Holden is crowned the winner of the first heat of the day in Senior Max takes the win ahead of Amelia Vincent who will finish ahead of a I'd imagine a rather deject Thomas Martin in third fourth Gary Ford fifth Ryan Hodge sixth is Harriet Styles seventh Lee Hodge and Andy Ward and Tyler Trotter round out the rest of the field in eighth and ninth positions but uh, you know flags telling the carts to all slow down as they'll make their way into the pit lane once more it will be the uh, RF Premier back again. Last time we saw them was in 2015, and now they here they are for their uh, their clay visit this year. See how their first heat pans out, but uh, end of the race there for Senior Max. There was very much provisional in uh, the case of Thomas Martin with that technical flag, of course. But Oliver Holden and Amelia Vincent do take the top two positions in Heat One for the Senior Max. The RAF Premier Heat 1 about to get underway or will do in half laps time when the carts are round and ready for the start of the race. The slightly chunkier uh, nose cone than uh, the majority of the classes we see here at Clay. But it will be Isabel Stora and Gerald Owen on the front row. Simon Hilton and Lee Mourns on row 2. Row 3, Troy Cole and Liam Long. Row 4. Matthew Hildred and Matthew Daniel and Sam Froggart and Callum Drew on row five. Looks like we'll, we'll be away though. And uh, indeed we are eight minutes of competition with the RAF Premier to look forward to. And it was Owen versus Hilton on the front row who will get the advantage of the first lap. And uh, one of the biggest fields of the day it's off to a promising start, still relatively close together, no one absolutely disappearing into the distance, although it has been a very positive start indeed for one of the drivers with a good start. Looks like that might have been Hilton, the number 65, as he uh, comes across the line, I can confirm it is indeed. And uh, Simon Hilton with a very good start there, getting into an early race lead, a spinner though, yellow flags waving. Gaining three positions from the start though, the best start of the field, Matthew Hildred and uh, started in sixth position but already the number 26 up into the final podium position there, as they made their way round for their second lap. And here they go then across the line and well I said about no one disappearing into the distance but Simon Hilton is doing a very good job of trying to do that isn't he, already very limited competition for the number 65 and uh, is getting away from the rest of the field in these early stages. Will he be able to uh, maintain opening up that gap? Maybe not. It looks like the number 26 of Matthew Hildred is uh, potentially equally as talented as Hilton and uh, could be catching up the current race leader for a potential overtake. And well, he definitely 
closed the gap significantly on our previous lap. Half a second he closed it by, and suddenly the race leader's lead does not look so well, so comfortable for one thing. Make their way into the hairpin. And now into the horseshoe, and already that move has been done. I'm not sure um, whether that was, I think it was just uh, coming out of the exit of the hairpin there, but one of the cards does go off. Frustrated driver hits the wheel, but um, one of the drivers looks like he's having a early retirement from this race. As they make their way into the S's for the fifth time. Number 26 of Matthew Hildred does now lead the way. Simon Hilton has a bit of pressure to deal with from Troy Cole. Number 28, who is in third place. And uh, top five already looking like a promising battle, certainly for spectators to watch. Making their way down the pit straight once more, the drivers. to Billy's blind and trying to get up the inside. That's a battle and a change for third position. The number 60, Liam Long getting past Troy Cole. That's for third. And uh, Troy Cole trying to go the inside once again to regain that position but couldn't quite do so. Now Cole having to defend from the number one, Oliver Wayne. So uh, presumably with the number one, the champion of the 2015 season. And uh, honestly, I don't know enough about the RAF Premier to tell you where he is in terms of the championship this season, but uh, he'll be looking to do well, I'm sure, in this clay meeting to uh, potentially maintain that championship status, I suppose. But uh, it's looking good for Matthew Hildred in this uh, early heat here. And talking of heat, it is getting pretty warm, isn't it? The sun certainly out today and here comes Hildred in second place now the number 60 of Liam Long having got past Simon Hilton Hilton now third Troy Cole fourth fifth Oliver Wayne and Gerald Owen is in sixth place though 1.2 seconds behind the fifth place Wayne could potentially be a battle between the top five but already it looks like that gap has opened up between the race leader of, uh, of Hildred and Long and that gap is back to that battle for the third effectively Simon Hilton, Troy Cole and Oliver Wayne the drivers make their way across the timing line once more 3 minutes and 8 seconds remain on the clock As they make their way into the S's onto the Sturmy straight and then into the hairpin Sweeping around the left-hand horseshoe, they go. Race leader, uh, Matthew Hildred at the moment, hasn't got much competition. Liam Long is doing a good job of maintaining that gap, but uh, not really decreasing it so much as of yet. We'll see as he goes across the line, he does close by 0.08 of a second, so uh, that kind of progress won't land him close enough to actually make a move on the current race leader. But uh, it's progress in the right direction for Liam Long. And over two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock, Hildred will certainly have to make sure that uh, Liam Long doesn't get too much closer or have to start thinking about defending with the last few laps coming up. Simon Hilton in the 65 still holding on to third, having held the race lead for a good few laps in the earlier stages. Oliver Wayne has managed to get past the 20th before he told me why. And the drivers made their way around now. I must my uh, early apologies here, of course, don't really uh, know much about the RAF class, obviously they're not very often here at Clay, so uh, I will have to spend a little bit of time learning all the names to make sure that uh, I can give the correct information out. Matthew Hildred in the lead of the race is being followed by Liam Long, I still remember the uh, names in there. Number one, uh, Oliver Wayne, 
is in third place now, having got past uh, both Hilton and Cole. So Troy Cole still in fifth place, but Simon Hilton loses that position down into fourth. Now Gerald Owen is in sixth, and uh, Troy Cole potentially has a bit of a problem from him as well. 0.63 of a second separates Cole and Owen. So uh, well, that could turn into a battle as we enter the closing stages. Now less than a minute to go. Comes the leading duo it is Matthew Hildred who leads the way and exactly the same lap time set by both Hildred and Long on that previous lap so the top two very very much identical in terms of pace well certainly for that previous lap but uh, at the moment it's looking good for Hildred with the one retirement of the race Lee Maund who uh, retired course at the end of lap three there, the exit of the hairpin. Ten seconds left on the clock, meaning that this will be the penultimate lap. Let's make their way into the hairpin once more. And around this sweeping what used to be the right hand bend but uh, recently named Buttons, I say recently, I think it was named actually quite a long time ago Buttons but I just don't uh, remember it. The last that board is out now so uh, not so long left to decide each of the finalised positions for the drivers but it's looking pretty good for Matthew Hildred. Liam Long may have been uh, catching a few laps ago but in that previous uh, lap actually did lose a bit of time to the race leader and Hildred should be on his way to a good first heat victory has made their way round into the top end onto the pit straight and down towards the finishing line they go taking the chequered flag in the lead of the race Matthew Hildred and he does take the win in uh, the heat one race number four here uh, of the RAF Premier class Oliver Wayne number one takes third position number 65 Simon Hilton takes fourth Troy Cole fifth Sick Callum Drew, who managed to get past Gerald Owen towards the closing stages of that race. Matthew Daniel, 8th, 9th, Sam Froggett, and Ben Scott, the leading novice, and uh, finishes inside the top 10 as well. The number 77 doing a good job there. Robert Small takes 11th place ahead of Owen Lane, and Sean Griffin finishes ahead of Isabel Storer in 13th place. Storer finishing in 14th. And the course, uh, the retirement of Lee Maund, the only non-finisher of that uh, early race here. Heat number one of the RAF Premier, but a good early win for Matthew Hildred as we look on to race number five, the 177 Masters. On the front row of this race we have Julian Howell on pole position and Joe Wormsley alongside him on the front row. Daniel Milner and uh, Keith Bishop on row two. Row three, Simon Gover and Dean Mann. Rob Prince and Daniel Martin make up row four. Ninth and tenth, Gary Cox and Tim Janes with Matthew Howell and Samuel Dix. Eleventh and twelfth, the twelve man grid here, the senior Max 177 and 177 Masters. And we will be away now. So away we go then with the 177s. And 
very, very early. A spin there for the number 78. That is Simon Gova, who takes a early spin, but uh, not too heavy a casualty. He is able to rejoin, and, uh, well, he's about the length of the stone. He's straight behind, but yellow flag waving, and that will help go Gova straight away. Two cards off on the... Uh, well, midway through hairpin there. Looks like they came together, but uh, both once again are able to rejoin, although it doesn't look particularly healthy. Rear bumper for one of the drivers may get a technical flag for that, but uh, number 19 of oh, Julian Howell takes an early lead. Just those of you who are watching the stream, if I do happen to pause suddenly, it might be because there's a, another uh, announcer on the circuit, so that'll be why uh, I'll have to pause uh, suddenly as they might be announcing the next race, etc. But uh, Daniel Milner now in second position. He is behind Julian Howell in the number 19, who is currently holding the race lead, and well, can he be... Uh, chopped off of his throne effectively. We know Julian Howell is a very quick driver, perhaps rivaled only maybe by Ma Martin Howell in this class and uh, the number 64 of Howell is in 6th place having his uh, low grid start started well, as far back as you can get pretty much without being right at the back, 11th out of 12 and already made very good progress up into 6th. Can Howell catch up the race leader by the end of the race? Well, we shall see, but uh, all ten of drivers are still going, despite a few incidents, they are all still racing in this one, heading down round the hairpin and into the horseshoe for what will be the fourth time, current fastest lap held by the race leader Julian Howell, he has got some fresh air ahead of him and uh, that will always help any driver having that uh, margin. Number 19, Julian Howell though, he is ahead of Daniel Will, number 62. Number 33, Joe Walsley is in third. Fourth is Dean Mann, Tim James is in fifth. Sixth, Martin Howell, uh, Daniel Martin, sorry, and then Martin Howell. Uh, Samuel Dix, Sonic Gover and Gary Cox. Daniel Martin, one to watch, that is for sure. down, hit straight, there you go, and into Billy's blind, Julian Howell does lead the way from Daniel Milner, Joe Walmsley is in third, Dean Mann still fourth place, that order hasn't changed from, well realistically, the start of the race, you can see why, the driver's fairly spaced out apart, it is uh, Julian Howell who leads the way as he exits the horseshoe, and uh, on the last lap, the top two separated by 0 0.6 of a second, so not miles apart, but not close enough that there uh, can be a move really seriously considered by the number 62 of Daniel Milner. He would have to be incredibly brave or incredibly stupid to uh, decidedly make that move on the race leader, but he just simply is not close enough to the number 19 in the race lead at the moment. Have to hope to coax him into making a mistake to get a pass or pick up some pace but at the moment he's very much equal to the race leader there's no real massive margin in pace there Julian Howell he uh, did open up that gap on the previous lap but only by one hundredth of a second um, Billings they go and uh, once again Julian Howell opening up his margin Daniel Milner is in second third Joe Wormsley Dean Mann and Daniel Martin now said about how quick he is and uh, the rivalry between Martin and Howell will it reach once again another exciting uh, peak well we will see later on in the races may not be this one might be slightly not enough time and too much of a distance between the two drivers for uh, Daniel Martin to truly catch up with Julian Howell to challenge his race lead, but uh, certainly 
Daniel Martin will be looking later on to get the edge for, of course, a better grip position in the final. Later on, the uh, 177, 177 Masters final in race number 26. It'll be 13 minutes plus one lap. The finals later on, so some long finals to look forward to in the afternoon. At the moment, though, it's looking good for Julian Howell as he leads Daniel Milner across the line to complete their ninth lap. Joe Walmsley in third, and Daniel Martin in fourth. 15 man Tim James in sixth position, just ahead of Gary Cox. The two separated by just 0.16 of a second. Martin Howell ahead of Simon Gover and Samuel Dix are the current eighth, ninth, and tenth trio at the back of the field. Down the pit straight comes the race leader once more, number 19 of Julian Howell in the lead of the race. And fastest lap of a 35.68, but that's not as quick as Daniel Martin's, a 35.33. Very, very quick indeed from Daniel Martin in the number 70. Not quite as quick as uh, some of the senior max times, but uh, 177s wouldn't expect to have uh, as quick lap times as the senior max. Still that rear bumper hanging ever so slightly from um, the number 70. I think it is Daniel Martin indeed who's got that uh, rear bumper slightly bent out of shape but uh, it's not trailing along the floor so therefore it's safe to continue. And into the S's, onto the Sturmley straight they go. Daniel Martin, having been involved in that earlier incident, has done a good job to get back up into fourth, but uh, it certainly seems to have scuppered his maybe opportunity to get into the race lead. Julian Owl, the uh, two are separated by 2.93 of a second, and that's simply too much with less than a minute to go of the race. Battle for second place and they almost in fact they might have touched ever so slightly Daniel Milner and Joe Wormsley Wormsley finally got the inside the number 33 up the inside of the number 62 would have been a change for second position but couldn't quite do it going down into Billy's blind looked a little bit optimistic to me but uh, as they make their way around the horseshoe into buttons got to remember to call the Ryan Ben buttons of course after Jensen button since he was born and bred uh, his karting career effectively in the Clay Pigeon Kart Club. As the drivers make their way around their individual parts of the circuit, but uh, really the race leader Julian Howell, he leads the way as he sweeps out of the hairpin now. Still that battle for second rages on, Daniel Milner versus Joe Wormsley. And uh, this will be a very good result for Julian Howell. Usually Howell and Daniel Martin take the uh, the top two positions, so having two carts in between them, in between uh, Howell and Martin, having Milner and Wormsley separating the pair, and that means that uh, it's ever the good result for the current race leader, as uh, the points will be tipped in his favour regardless of whether Daniel Martin does take the last two wins, but uh, they're still on the, this last lap where Daniel Martin is going to try and overtake Joe Wormsley. That will be a change for third place, but will he be able to get past Daniel Milner as well? Will he be able to get past either? Doesn't look like he maybe won't be able to. The position still maintained the same. Daniel Martin is in fourth. Making their way down towards the checkered flag. It will be a win for Julian Howell, but going across the line, is it going to be a change? Going across the line, no, there is not. So Daniel Milner does take second place. Joe Wormsley third, ahead of Daniel Martin, but they were separated by just 0.05 of a second across the line. Dean Mann takes fifth place in a somewhat lonely race for him. Gary Cox takes sixth position, seventh. Tim James just ahead of Simon Gover and Martin Howell, and Samuel Dix finish just six hundredths of a second apart from one another in ninth and tenth.
the senior TKM are out and they are getting ready for their first heat of the day. The five drivers out here competing for the win. So who will be getting the results in the early stages here in the heat? Luke Barton is on pole and potentially the favourite to win it today. Derek Hunt is in second place alongside him on the front row. Will Fox against William Davies on row two and Jonathan Fox, brother of the number 50, Will Fox starts at the back of the grid in fifth position although with such a small grid grid positions maybe not the most uh, important thing in this race a lot about pace and ability in the senior tkm class and away they go the five drivers ready for their first heat of the day and already the number 18 of luke barton makes a good start from pole position opening up the gap between himself and the number 22 of hunt And into the hairpin, each of the drivers go, sweeping into the horseshoe. Hunt still defending that second place. And it's a good start from the number 88 of Jonathan Fox. Managed to get past both Davis and Will Fox into third position. Certainly looking good for Luke Barton, even in the stages as early as these. It's looking like that gap is already forming pretty significantly between himself and Hunt, although Hunt's under a bit of pressure himself from Jonathan Fox. John Fox, who's just ahead of Will Davis and Will Fox. Although it looks like uh, Will Fox has managed to get past uh, Will Davis now, so Davis at the back of the field in number 89. to the S's goes the race leader now the rest of the field but uh, the number 22 Derek Hunt is leading just about Jonathan Fox ahead of Will Fox ahead of Will Davis but those four impossible to separate at the moment made their way into the horseshoe for the third time into buttons and into the top bend now but it certainly looks like for the number 18 Luke Barton even in as stages as early as this, he's, uh, he's racing very well, has got the pace and uh, seemingly in a good position to take the win in the first heat of the day. But uh, number 50 of Will Fox has managed to get past Derek Hunt and that is a change for uh, second position. So Will Fox with a very good, uh, very productive previous lap where he managed to get past both his brother and uh, now Hunt at the start of this one. Made their way into the top end where, as I mentioned, the exit is so necessary to get a really optimum speed down uh, the pit straight as they head towards Billy's Blind where so many overtakes are, uh, are made. But uh, at the moment, second placed Will Fox in number 50. Ahead of Hunt, ahead of Davis, ahead of Jonathan Fox. So it's almost the qualifying positions. It just has to uh, be Hunt overtaking Will Fox, and uh, that is the qualifying positions. But uh, considering the amount of change, it's quite surprising they managed to get that close once again. So their grid positions proves how competitive the class is. Their pace, obviously, very similar.
drivers make their way round once more. Then Luke Barton completing his eighth lap, and now the rest of the drivers will continue to do so. Will Fox comes across the line and sets a 36.37, not his fastest lap of the race. A 36.16 is his personal best, which is uh, slightly better than the 36.23 set by Jonathan Fox. For the best lap, a 35.97, unsurprisingly set by the race leader, number 18, Luke Barton, doing a fantastic job out there in the lead of the race at the moment. Having no problem with the rest of the field, whereas the rest of the competitors argue could be doing so. Into Billy Flying, the drivers who are really competing with each other go. And down Sturmy straight to meet the hairpin. Will Fox continuing to escape from Derek Hunt in that uh, partial battle for second, although it looks like the battle really could have been won by Will Fox a few laps ago. He is quicker and escaping from Derek Hunt. 22 cart, but uh, the gap between Barton and Will Foss for the race lead 4.7 seconds over the line. So, certainly looking good for the current race leader to be able to take a first win of the day in his first race of the day. still competing out here to try and improve on their retrospective position certainly towards the back of the field there's a battle between Jonathan Fox Will Davis and Derek Hunt and Hunt gets forced out wide will he be able to regain that position he's lost out to uh, Jonathan Fox here Fox does go up the inside Will Davis also trying to get past Hunt but uh Hunt does manage to hold on to fourth for now. Jonathan Fox taking a relatively wide line going into the left hand kink going down the pit straight but uh, nonetheless does hold third now behind his brother Will Fox who's definitely escaped now for second place. That second place nigh on guaranteed with just under 25 seconds to go. of Luke Barton sets his uh, 13th lap time a 36-1-3 and it's not as fast as fast as is a 35-9-7 now getting anything under the 36 second mark in senior TKM is considered fast and uh, Luke Barton is definitely fast looks like one of the drivers has disappeared though. It looks like Will Davis has turned into the pits. For what reason? I just don't know, but he is in the pit lane now. So the number 89, uh, seemingly, which is a shame because he was in that battle between Jonathan Fox and Derek Hunt, but uh, now in the pit lane and uh, obviously had to go in there for one reason or another, but. Uh, Now the carts are making their way towards the chequered flag. It is now the last lap. Hasn't been the most eventful of races, but uh, still some good moments early on with battles with the final four, but a very comfortable and by far the most dominant victory of the day so far from Luke Barton, number 18. Will Fox takes second, Jonathan Fox third, and Derek Hunt takes fourth place, which concludes the senior TKM heat number one of the day. And uh, next up we'll be having the Junior Max in race number seven.
Kieran Jenkins and Max Moore please come to the grid. That's uh, for the cadets, but uh, apparently they haven't turned up for the grid and your race is next. So you really need to be uh, turning up for the race. Um, so it's your call basically to make your way to the grid now. Junior Max Heat 1, we are now underway with this race. So, uh, once again, a grid of five in the uh, Junior Max, and it is Angus Fry, number 46, Harry Wilson Brown, number 27, and uh, Fraser Danoon, Bradley Shepherd, and Michael Goodburn are all the competitors out in this class today. And see how this one pans out in comparison to the uh, Senior TKM, of course, both have five competitors so see if there are any uh, similar at all in that respect but uh, number 46 of Angus Fry currently leading the race with Harry Wilson Brown in second already a uh, a casualty here Bradley Shepard into the pits number 53 and uh, early pit stop or uh, a retirement of the race of course Pit stops are very much unconventional in kart racing, but um, could simply be changing something on the kart before he'll rejoin the rest of the grid, but certainly that's, uh, that's going to very much harm his chances of anything but a fifth place finish now. Top two, Angus Fry and Harry Wilson-Brown. Could this be the main battle of the day? It already seems that the rest of the field has split out Danoon and Michael Goodburn in third and fourth have uh, somewhat dispersed, although they're not too far away from one another. Grid effectively split into two pairs. Fry and Wilson Brown are very much the front pair, but are they really competing with each other? Fry in the lead of the race. And we've got uh, Wilson Brown in second behind him. But Fry looks comfortable with that lead at the moment. And uh, you can see why the gap 0.69 of a second, so certainly not close enough for Wilson Brown to make any potential moves. Fraser Zanoon. Fraser Zanoon and Michael Goodburn, though, battling for third place. And it uh, looks like that might very much turn into a move now. Number 12, Michael Goodburn, goes hurling past to noon. And uh, a very good piece of racing there from the number 12, Michael Goodburn. Just seemed to have the overspeed heading down the pit straight and uh, made that speed count. Getting past to noon, though he does drift slightly wide. In the, uh, in the horseshoe there. Doesn't lose the position though. Would he be able to hold on to third for the rest of the race? Well, we shall see. But uh, he certainly seems to have picked up the pace over the last few laps. Wasn't looking so quick a uh, few laps ago where Danoon had seemingly a comfortable third position. But now uh, he has lost that somewhat. And uh, Michael Goodburn up into third place. And currently winning the Battle of the Novices. Which consists of the two carts who are in third and fourth at the moment. Top two though, Angus Fry and Harry Wilson Brown, 46 and 27 at the front of the field. Made their way into the S's once more. And down the stummy straight into the hairpin. Angus Fry looking comfortable with this lead at the moment. And he is opening up that margin every lap. Back to Harry Wilson-Brown. The margin 0.3 seconds now. So uh, is steadily opening up. As the carts come across the line now to complete their seventh lap. In the uh, eight minute heat that uh, all of the drivers will witness for the first three heats of the day for each of the classes. Three minutes 
And 35 seconds left on the clock. Round the horseshoe and into buttons go the leading couplet. Though you could very much say that uh, Angus Fry is not really part of a battle anymore and just on his way to a victory. Not quite as uh, as dominant as Luke Barton was in the previous race, but um, certainly isn't having any troubles early on here. And for some reason there are now many flies in the commentary box, which is rather annoying. I'd like to get a fly spray out, but uh, regardless, Angus Fry in the lead of the race and seemingly heading on his way to a good first heat victory. Two minutes left on the clock though for the Junior Max Heat 1. Angus Fry leading the way, Harry Wilson Brown second, Michael Goodburn third, Fraser Danoon fourth and that order hasn't changed for well a good five, six laps now since Goodburn managed to get his way past Danoon for that position change for third. None of the drivers now in any apparent battles with one another. All four of the competitors very much spaced out. And um, realistically, if there were to be a battle, it would either be between Angus Fry and Harry Wilson Brown or Wilson Brown and Goodburn. But there's nowhere near enough time for either Wilson Brown or Goodburn to catch up with their retrospective imminent leaders ahead of them. So, uh, it seems that the order could already be more or less set with 20 seconds to go. Uh, Angus Fry, number 46, has not much time. Just the rest of this lap and then the lap following will be on his way to a first heat victory. Harry Wilson-Brown in second position ahead of Michael Goodburn in third. Fourth, Fraser Danoon, fastest lap holder is the race leader Angus Fry 35.18 but uh, interestingly the next fastest lap after that a 35.2 set by Michael Goodburn in third Harry Wilson Brown in second place a 35.5 so uh, ever so slightly uh, slower than Goodburn in terms of fastest laps and in fact Goodburn has been closing in on Wilson Brown over the last few laps but he's not going to have enough time to do anything about it with this now being the final lap of the race. Angus Fry is making his way towards the checkered flag where he will win the first race of the day for the Junior Max and the first race of the day for the number 46 who now does come across the line and wins the race with what he made look like relative ease. Fry wins ahead of Harry Wilson Brown. Michael Goodburn, despite closing in on Wilson Brown slightly over the last uh, few stages, couldn't do anything about that position and does maintain in third. And Fraser Danoon takes fourth place.
Here we are again then, back with the biggest grid of the day, the 22 drivers consisting of a mix of Honda and Ayami cadets Ooh, spread out amongst the field. But uh, on the front row of this one we have Ewan Charman, Sean Cuss on uh, second place, Kyron Jenkins and Ethan Leader on row two. Row three, Ollie Tyler and Harry James, Edward Leader and Theo Bacuris, the winner of heat one uh, on row four. And then 9th and 10th, Cameron Ross and Liam Deedman, Thomas Brand, Jed Murphy make up 11th and 12th. But there are a total of 22 drivers out here on the circuit. So uh, a large grid and I'm sure a large amount of excitement as the cars do get underway for their second heat. And already you can see the carts start squabbling for positions in the early stages. Yellow flags almost deployed there, but it looks like the cars have all managed to get away with it in the uh, early first couple of corners. Can they all make their way round the hairpin and the horseshoe without any such incidents? Hairpin is done, and uh, horseshoe. to make their way down the line for the first time it is the number 69 of Sean Cuss who does lead the way and Ollie Tyler in second place having gained four positions from the start brilliant start from him and uh, another driver gaining four positions Cameron Crockett the novice who started in uh, 21st place but now is up into 17th but uh, Ollie Tyler up into second position uh, already having had a very good start but Sean Cuss having a uh, very good start as well up into the lead of the race but already it seems that Ollie Tyler has managed to get past him and uh, Ollie Tyler now on the C-plated cart up into the lead of the race a uh, battle very much rages for second position as things stand but Ollie Tyler has a very good chance here of trying to escape from the rest of the field hard thing to do in the cadets class but he will very much try Ethan leader is in second place, Edward Leader third, fourth is Mercurius, and fifth, Cuss, sixth, Ewan Charman. There's a contact warning for the number 69, that's Sean Cuss, down in fifth place. The yellow flags waving for two carts who are off and Billy's blind, but uh, they have managed to both get going again, so fortunately for each of those drivers, number 66 and 23, they are both able to get going again, that's Max Moore and Ethan Simmons. Towards the front of the field, Ollie Tyler does still lead the way. As they make their way down the pit straight once more, Ollie Tyler leads from the number 27 of uh, Ethan Leader ahead of Theo McCorris. McCorris seems to really have his racing boots on today. McCorris gets past Leader and is now only faced with the task of getting past the race leader, Ollie Tyler. S sounds easy, but uh, really isn't. Ollie Tyler very. Uh, experienced and quick Honda Cadet driver he hasn't got that C-plated cart for no reason Ollie Tyler in the lead of the race but now has Theo McCorris winner of race number one relatively hot on his heels I said about trying to escape from the rest of the field very hard to do so with the slipstream such an effective feature on these uh, low powered Honda Cadet carts and uh, the toe you get down the pit straight astronomical compared to other classes so uh, trying to escape really is a task and uh, Ollie Tyler has obviously found this as a, uh, a very difficult mission indeed with Theo McCorris now right on his tail McCorris versus Tyler and Ethan Leader as well don't forget him in third place if McCorris goes past Tyler will Leader be able to follow through the number 22 of e Edward Leader is uh, in fourth place but a fair way off the top three Sean Cuss is in fifth sixth Ewan Charman, Harry James in 7th and Cameron Ross in 8th. That's still a pretty big group, those five drivers there. As uh, Theo McCorris has a look up the inside of Billings but can't quite do anything about it there. Tyler having to defend as they make their way into the S's. The three drivers very close together still as they make their way down the Sturmy straight into the hairpin. Once again, McCorris having a look up the inside, but Ollie Tyler had that one covered. Made sure he took a relatively defensive line. Ethan Leader still having a look, but uh, McCorris does now go up the inside of the horseshoe and does make that move stick. So now McCorris has the lead. Can Ollie Tyler do anything about the new race leader? One heat one, of course, but uh, McCorris will have a difficult task considering that he's starting. He's got his uh, rear grid start in heat three. So uh, he'll have to make his way through 
several carts in order to get into a leading position again, but he'll very much help if he manages to get uh, two wins out of two, but there is a cart off. Uh, the entrance to Billy's looks like he's okay and may be able to rejoin without any help of the marshals. Does indeed. Yellow flags were waving, but uh, does manage to get under go uh, underway once more. Makuris leads the way from Ollie Tyler, and still Ethan Leader looks on in third position, but hasn't quite just ever so slightly got that pace that uh, the top two have in order to be able to catch up with them. But it is looking good for Makuris at the moment with Ollie Tyler in second place right behind number 74 but can he find his way past going into the yeses and down the Sturmy straight Bikuris not choosing a defensive line but just depending on his uh, sheer pace which he seems to very much have at the moment has in abundance Oh, he has done so far throughout the day. Ollie Tyler in C-plated cart in second place. Can't do anything about the race leader at the moment. Ethan Leader in third place has somewhat dropped off on the top two. Could very much be a battle between the top two for the lead of the race. Ed Ethan Leader getting left behind. Uh, but Edward Leader in fourth place hasn't got uh, very much comfort either. He's got Sonny Smith, Sean Cuss. Charlie Vaughan, Ewan Charman, Harry James all very close behind. And then there's a gap back to Karen Jenkins for 10th. But uh, still a very close battle going on for there as well. And that is a pass being made on Edward Leader now. Sonny Smith getting past number 95 up into 4th now. Still the battle rages. Ollie Tyler versus Macoris. And I don't think Macoris has actually been overtaken so far today. That's a... Uh, an achievement, isn't it? I'm not sure he's actually beat. He might have in uh, Heat 1, but he certainly hasn't in this race. He's only made progress up the field. And uh, that is credit to the number 74, who's racing very, very capably at the moment. Getting past Ollie Tyler in the C-plated cart and not really having to defend that heavily is a real accomplishment in itself. And he'll continue fighting, I'm sure, till the dying seconds of this race. And indeed, the last lap, which we could see of significant importance. Maybe Ollie Tyler is just biding his time. He's just waiting for the latter stages in this race to, uh, to strike Mikoris and take a, uh, a victory, potentially. But uh, it certainly doesn't look like he's getting in as many attacking positions as Mikoris was when he was behind uh, Ollie Tyler. Tyler seemed to be under a real... Uh, threat every second from Macoris. Macoris always having a look, diving up the inside, but uh, Tyler's been a lot more maybe reserved. He's uh, just stayed behind, hasn't got himself into any many really threatening positions, and is just sticking behind the race leader at the moment. The gap between second and third, though, Ollie Tyler and Ethan Leader has opened up to 2.8 seconds, so Ethan Leader really uh, seemingly not a threat to the top two now. Sonny Smith in fourth place is catching up with Ethan Leader as well pretty quickly half a second on that previous lap the gap between third and fourth 1.9 seconds Edward Leader has very much still got company from Charlie Vaughan, Sean Cuss and Harry James who are all having a very good squabble there later on down the field but uh, it seems that I might be opening up ever so slightly number 42 of Ewan Charman behind Harry James and uh, threatening to try and take eighth place from him battle between the top two could well be the one that uh, takes the most twists and turns here on the last lap but uh, well being the last lap Ollie Tyler really has got to do everything he can now he knows it's the last lap the last lap bulb was shown but, <laughs> but can he do anything about the race leader he's getting himself in all kinds of positions trying to get past but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Mikoris will be heading his way down towards the chequered flag to take two wins out of two and Mikoris does take the chequered flag in the lead. Takes the win ahead of Ollie Tyler. Ethan Leader takes third place. Sonny Smith fourth. Fifth Charlie Vaughan. Edward Leader takes sixth. Seventh Sean Cuss. Ewan Charman. Harry James and Karen Jenkins running out the top ten. Luke Randall eleventh. 
Jed Murphy, 12th, 13th. Jake Adams, Thomas Brown, 14th. Daniel Beards, Cameron Ross, uh, Cameron Crockett, Liam Deedman, Mason Perrin and Daniel Thorne running out the top 20. And Ethan Simmons and Max Moore will be 21st and 22nd of the 22-man grid. But uh, an exciting race there, certainly between the top two. But Theo uh, McCowns does now take the win ahead of Ollie Tyler. And McCorris has now two wins under his belt from two races. Can he make it three out of three in their heat later on? In race number 15, Minimax and the Junior TKM will be out next, though, in race number nine. So the Minimax grid, Tian and Rourke on pole alongside Will Uphill and Harrison Collins on row two alongside Oakley Pryor. He plays in Oakley Pryor of course, took the victory early on in the heat one. And uh, well, he managed to win pretty well in that one but uh, can he do the same again starting in fourth place this time. Will Uphill has got himself in a very good position, number 85, Harrison Collings in second place, right behind, and also Tom Adams gaining two positions off the grid, but Oakley Pryor made zero progress, started fourth, remains in fourth, but uh, Tom Adams trying to go up the inside now, that's a change for second place, Harrison Collings being forced out wide, and it looks like uh, Pryor is also going to try and follow through, Collings is going to try and force him out wide though, and uh, Pryor will have to settle for fourth once more. He's going to try and go the inside of Buttons, though. He does manage to do that. And uh, Collings now loses fourth place. First change of position at Buttons, I believe, today. But uh, Harrison Collings now in fourth place. Fifth is Tiernan Rourke. Sixth, James Crossley. Michael Salmon, Harvey Toynley and uh, Joseph Hopwood, seventh, eighth and ninth. Will Uphill in the lead of the race, so number 85. How long will that be? Well, it looks like he might have already lost it since I've said that from the, the screen. Showing the information that uh, Tom Adams is now in the lead of the race, number 57, and already seemingly has a pretty decent gap back to Will Uphill, number 85, who was in the lead of the race, but uh, now is having to deal with some pressure from Oki Pryor in third. Tom Adams, the number 57 is in the lead of the race now and has a 0.7 gap to play with. Will Uphill has fallen down into third place. Oakley Pryor in the E-plated cart has managed to get past up into second place. Pryor once again finding his way further up the field but uh, Will uh, Uphill losing yet another position now to Harrison Collins this time. Uphill suddenly just losing some pace and is now down into fourth position behind Collins. Adams versus Pryor it could be as the top two make their way down into Philly blind and now towards the S's. Here they go down the Sturmy straight, the race leader, Tom Adams, as he's got Oakley Pryor relatively hot on his heels. 
number 96 of Collins now ahead of uh, the number 54, that is, of uh, number 56, sorry, of Tin and Rourke. But uh, Will Uphill has lost a good couple more positions, so whether he really is struggling with pace, he's uh, certainly lost out somewhat since he's, uh, he was in the lead, of course, just two, three laps ago, and now down into sixth place. And so number 85 really not having the best day in terms of pace at least but Joseph Hawkwood once again uh, into the pits number 33 and the uh, the sole junior TKM driver out there could he be on his way to two maximum point races but two retirements that could well be a first but uh, who knows <laughs> the top two though Tom Adams OG Fryer Tom Adams is in the lead of the race at the moment. Oakley Pryor in second place and not too far behind. And uh, not exactly right on the bumper of uh, Tom Adams, but Tom Adams certainly has to worry about the number 66 now. Very, very close behind. And uh, could he be making a move or certainly plotting that move as he makes his way down from the top end towards Billy's blind. Down towards Billy's they go. No move being made by Pryor this time, but will he try and dive up the inside of the S's? Yes, he does. Goes up the inside, and Pryor now in the lead of the race, heading down the stummy straight and uh, towards the hairpin. Pryor now with the lead of the race ahead of Tom Adams. And he's raced for the first time in Heat 2. It's uh, taken just seven laps to do so. And uh, it is Harrison Collings in third ahead of Tin and Raw. Will Uphill has managed to regain some ground up into fifth place now. And, uh, Tom Adams isn't giving up on this fight. He doesn't make a move, but uh, Oakley Pryor has some pressure to deal with here. Or does he? Will he be able to just escape from the number 57? He seems to have more raw pace and doesn't hold the fastest lap. Oh, yes, he does. Sorry, he does hold the fastest lap. A 36, let me just see, 36.2. Uh, but two very quick personal best sectors from uh, Harrison Collings. A 13.01 personal best in sector one. And a 14.52 personal best in that sector so he does uh, not quite set his personal best there but a uh, fastest lap does still belong to Oakley Pryor who has the fastest lap only five hundredths of a second faster than Tom Adams so those two do seem to be the closest uh, two really leading competitors in terms of pace Lead belonging to the E plated AP prior. Heads on the 57 of Tom Adams and 56 of Tina Raw is in third, fourth Will Uphill. James Crossley is in fifth. And what's happened to Harrison Collings? Number 96. He is that oh, way, he hasn't come around, has he? So uh, yeah, it looks like he's off here, just off the uh, side. On Sturmy straight midway through and obviously decided he pulled the cart off and hasn't crashed there because uh, that's nigh on impossible to get to that position uh, through crashing I'd imagine but uh, he's out of the race so Harrison Collings out when he was in third position so now third gifted to Tin and Raw can Will Uphill find himself back into another podium position having lost so much time and positions he's uh, seeming to pick back up again now and uh, we know how capable a driver he is. Will he be able to get back into the top three by the end of this race? There's uh, 50 seconds left on the clock. And the top two still battling Pryor versus Adams, but Adams just losing a tiny bit of time each lap. And uh, loses 500 of a second once more on that lap. So he's just not quite close enough to Oki Pryor to be able to really thread him to uh, maybe retake that race lead but um, at the moment is looking pretty good for Oakley Pryor for two wins out of two as they sweep their way around the left hand horseshoe and then into the right hand buttons into the top bend 
to make their way down the pit straight to complete their 13th lap. Three, two, one, and the timer has now reached zero, so the end of this lap plus the lap after will be how long they've got to go for. Will Tom Adams be close enough to make a move in the last lap then? You'll know that this will be the last lap coming up now. The last lap board is out, so the final lap has begun. Pryor versus Adams. And Adams may just have to settle for second. I'm not sure he's just close enough to Oakley Pryor to truly think about making a move. Meanwhile, Will Uphill is relatively close to Tin and Raw. That may change for third place, but uh, Tom Adams he doesn't make any moves. That probably is for the better. Might have just ended up in an incident and a potential points deduction or a potentially further consequences, but uh, looks like it is going to be two wins out of two for Oakley Pryor in the E-plated cart. Tom Adams takes second position. Third place is going to go to Tin and Roll, but only just well uphill, having lost quite a lot of pace towards the start of the race. He's uh, really picked up and um, done very well to regain positions back into fourth now, number 85. James Crossley takes fifth in number 42. 27 of Michael Salmon uh, takes sixth place this time, having not finished in uh, the first heat, so uh, good for him to get some more points on the board. Harvey uh, Tomley takes uh, seventh position, and Harrison Collings and Joseph Hockwood the two retirements of this race. Joseph Hockwood, of course, in the junior TKMs so are not competing with the Minimax, but uh, combined with them for today. As Oakley Pryor takes two wins out of two, Tom Adams takes second place. So the Senior Max Heat 2 about to get underway, they're on their formation lap now and are getting ready for the start of their second heat. Harriet Stiles takes pole position after uh, a relatively disappointing heat I think for her in Heat 1. Tyler Trotter is alongside her on the front row. Ari Barker and Andy Ward make up row 2, row 3, Oliver Holden, Amelia Vincent, Thomas Martin, the race winner I believe of uh, race number 1 wasn't I'm just trying to think, yeah he was I think, uh, winner of Heat 1, Gary Ford 8th on the grid and Ryan and Lee Hodge at the back in 9th and 10th. Both of course novices so start at the back of the grid automatically. Can they make any progress though as the race goes on? 8 minutes of Senior Max to enjoy for the second time of the day. Away they go, Harriet Styles versus uh, Tyler Trotter on the front row. Number 99 of Tyler Trotter looks like he has had to settle behind the orange and black Harriet Styles cart. Number 18, who takes a early lead from pole position, had no troubles in Billy's blind. So uh, we're looking to try and hold on to that lead for as long as she possibly can after a racy looking Thomas Martin to the win of course and heat number one will he be able to make it two out of two And in second place, the number 19 of Andy Ward. Tyler Totter losing a position 
Ari Barker in fourth, Oliver Holden fifth ahead of Emilio Vincent. That's Oliver Holden, who I just remembered was in fact the uh, race winner of Heat 1. He's uh, gaining a, another position there, getting past uh, Amelia Vincent and Ari Barker, who's lost four positions now. So Ari Barker not having the best lap on that previous lap. Down into eighth position now, the number 14. But uh, it's looking good for Harriet Stars at the moment in the lead of the race. And. Uh, Seemingly not under too much pressure from Andy Ward, who's in second. Third place is Tyler Trotto in the number 99. And I don't know, in fact, it is Oliver Holden has been passed. Uh, has the young Tyler Trotter. Trotter now the number 99, losing three positions on previous lap, in fact. Oliver Holden, Thomas Martin, and Ryan Hodge all getting past number 99. So. Trotter now down into sixth position, but Styles still leads the way, and the ward is in second, third. Oliver Holden, Thomas Martin in fourth, and they could be the four drivers to really watch. Of course, Thomas Martin could have got the victory earlier on had it not been for that technical flag, where he just seemed to give up the uh, positions to Amelia Vincent and uh, Oliver Holden. The last few laps. Emilio Vincent, meanwhile, is in eighth place. Harriet Stars, though, with that lead, seems to have lost that gap significantly. And uh, that is due to a very much flying Oliver Holden, who is, well, he caught up to Andy Ward in that previous lap by half a second and now has overtaken and established a gap between himself and Ward of 0.25 for a second. So Holden effectively closing in on the race leader by over. Um, well, over a second, realistically, to Harriet Styles. So, uh, seeming very good at the moment for Oliver Holden. Going on this form, he should be able to get past number 18. But Styles, as we know, a very competitive racer. And she'll be looking to try and hold on to the lead for as long as possible. But now could be the moment Oliver Holden trying to get past. He'll look to the inside of Billy's. He can't quite get past there, though. Harriet Styles has that covered. Styles versus Holden, then Ward is in third, fourth is Thomas Martin and Ryan Hodge doing a good job in fifth position. Uh, will he be able to get past Thomas Martin? That'll be a change in position there, but Oliver Holden has now managed to get past Harriet Styles. That's a change in the lead of the race and now it is the race lead for the number 23 of, of uh, Oliver Holden. The question is, can Holden escape from the rest of the field and uh, really establish a positive gap and lead for himself where he'll be able to uh, be able to just open up that gap a little bit by little bit every lap and uh, just effectively bleed the rest of the competitors out so they can't catch up with him anymore. But it's looking like it could be any of the top five at the moment. Going on pace, Oliver Holden should win it, but uh, we all know that uh, anything can happen in kart racing. Oliver Holden, number 23, leads the way, but uh, he should be able to maintain that lead as well. Harriet Styles is in second, Andy Ward third, Thomas Martin fourth, and Ryan Hodge in fifth. They're all still so close together, especially second down to fifth. It's looking like a change of position might happen though. Ryan Hodge trying to go up the inside of, uh, who's that, the number 19, Andy Ward. So Andy Ward does fall down into fifth now. 
Ryan Hodge making significant progress. Started right at the back of the field and now up into fourth. Brilliant. Is now up into fourth place behind Thomas Martin, number 69, who is not too far behind Harriet Styles. And could Styles lose another position? She lost the lead a couple of laps ago. Will she lose second place too to... Uh, to Thomas Martin, number 69. Harry Styles could yet have that move very much up for debate. Fastest lap on the race of 34.97. Oliver Holden, very quick indeed from the number 23. He is on his way to yet another pretty dominant victory. Not that he won was, but he's had some in the past. But uh, he won, it was much more competitive. But this one, it seems that Oliver Holden is just too much for the opposition. Thomas Martin has managed to get past Harriet Styles, and so Styles loses yet another position down into third now. Just lacking a little bit of pace from. Uh, from the top two, Ryan Hodge is in fourth, fifth is Andy Ward. Still that top five remain relatively close apart from the race leader, uh, Holden, who somewhat escaped. But uh, second, third, fourth and fifth still pretty close together as they make their way to the top end. Heading their way down the pit straight now. Not long left to go, only... 14 seconds left in the clock, so this will be the penultimate lap. And Thomas and Martin, the number 69, is in second place and is going round the hairpin ahead of Harriet Stars and ahead of Ryan Hodge. Five place novice. Only one driver out of the running, and it's Ari Barker, number 40, from a, a promising grid position. Unfortunately, out of the running, certainly in the pits, whether they uh, just decided to retire from the race or whether there was a problem, that's uh, unknown. But uh, Ari Barker, nonetheless, the only driver who's in this class, not out on the circuit at the moment. This is the last lap now, and Oliver Holden will be on his way to two out of two victories. He takes the checkered flag, and uh, he takes a relatively comfortable victory as well. 2.95 seconds ahead of Thomas Martin, who finishes in second. Third, Harriet Stars, head of Ryan Hodge, although Hodge was really catching up. And over the line, only separated by six hundredths of a second. Andy Ward, fifth. Sixth, Gary Ford. Seventh, Lee Hodge. Emilia Vincent and Tyler Trotter round out the rest of the field.
RAF Premier about to get underway with their second heat. And it is Stephen Boffey on pole position alongside Oliver Wayne. And row two consists of Sam Froggart and Callum Drew. Fifth and sixth, Lee Maund and Gerald Owen. Simon Hilton and Matthew Daniel with Hildred, the race winner, in tape and alongside Troy Cole. And away they go then. We are running with the... Uh, the RAF Premier, the Heat 2, but there's a spinner, number 31, uh, right at the start. Stephen Boffey from pole position, unfortunate to be spun, and uh, now has to join at the back of the field. Got to feel sorry for the number 31 there, but uh, that means a massive gap already is formed for the current race leader, Oliver Wayne. Finished in uh, a fifth or fourth, can't quite remember. Um, in heat to one, but uh, now has a massive margin. With Stephen Boffey getting spun on the exit of the S's there. Already looking pretty good for Oliver Wayne, though Callum Drew will start by 0.29 of a second of our previous lap, so certainly not guaranteed that Oliver Wayne's going to just stroll to victory here. Callum Drew not far behind at all, number 24. Gerald Owen in third, number 27. And uh, Lee Maund in fourth, number 13. Matthew Daniel in fifth, sixth. Simon Hilton, seventh. Troy Cole, Liam Long in eighth. And both Cole and Long gaining two positions on our previous lap. Long finish second place in heat one. Can he improve on that? He's already up to eight in uh, heat two. Will he be able to find his way further on the field? Looks like a very competitive class out here, the RAF Premier, so uh, whether we will see that uh, it is harder to get through the field, well, who knows, but uh, Lee Long certainly has his work cut out if he wants to really improve on his position. And uh, certainly if he wants to improve on his position, from Heat 1 and win the race. Wayne versus Drew is really turning into a battle though. The top two, Wayne might have managed to get away at the first few laps, but uh, Callum Drew has very much reeled him in and the number 24 is right on the tail of the leader of the race. And then there's a fairly big gap out to Gerald Owen. 2.5 seconds, in fact, is the margin. Back to third. Lee Maund is in fourth. Fifth is Matthew Daniel. And uh, that's also very closely competed. The battle for fifth place. Pretty tense. of Gerald Owen ahead of Lee Maund and uh, that battle seems to be losing and ebbing away ever so slightly for Lee Maund Gerald Owen just seemingly pulling away a tiny bit uh, but Matthew Daniel is still holding on to that battle for fifth place meanwhile Matthew Daniel just ahead of Liam Long, and then Matthew Hildred, Simon Hilton, Troy Cole, all very close together, then Robert, being followed by Lane, Small, Ben Scott, loads of little battles going on everywhere, but uh, certainly most of the drivers can imagine that their positions can be improved upon, apart from the race leader, Oliver Wayne, who is very much under pressure from the number 24th, Callum Drew, and Drew might try and make a move as they make their way down towards Billy's line. Drew already had a couple of opportunities now. Drew does got the inside. Can he do anything there? No, not quite. Number one of Wayne's holds on at the moment. Wayne versus Callum Drew. So, Drew goes to the outside now. Can he get any kind of uh, positioning for the move? He tries to go around the outside of the horseshoe. Well, it's been done, but very rarely. Very, very difficult move to pull off. And as they made their way 
into the top bend. Heading their way down now, Cullen Drew could be in for another opportunity into Billy's blind. Car out great. Number one there. And Wayne holds on to his race lead for now. Callum Drew seems to be his only competitor. The next nearest is third place Lee Maund, who's over 5.2 seconds behind the current race leader. And uh, in fact, Lee Maund has a lot of trouble to deal with of his own. Gerald Owen, who's recently overtook as Daniel and Hilda, and right on his tail. But now Drew's running on the inside. Can't quite do anything there. But uh, that was very close once again. Now he's going to try on the inside into the SCB. He finally does make the move still. Wayne loses out on the race lead. Will he try to come back though? He's going to switch back to the inside. That would have been a fantastic move if he managed to get that done. Can't quite do so though. Callum Drew holds on to the race lead. And the number one of uh, Oliver Wayne has now dropped down into second position. Now the question is whether Drew can hold on to the end of the race. Into... The uh, race lead now, two minutes and five seconds to go, which is uh, a lot of times early in race terms, but that's only maybe four laps or five laps or so. Number 13 of Lee Maund is very much occupied with the battles of Matthew Hildred, who's in behind Gerald Owen. Liam Long hasn't been able to make much progress from uh, eighth place, he's only up into seventh. Matthew Daniel in sixth place is still the battle is raging a bit further down the field and now number 26 does go past as Matthew Hildred up into third place gets past Lee Maund but uh, it seems that Callum Drew having got past the race leader really is in good stead now he's uh, in the lead of the race has a bit of a gap for himself 0.82 of the second over the number one and uh at the moment it's looking like he's on his way to his first victory of the day could we see three different victories in three different heats or three different victors i should say different race winners it certainly could be on matthew hildred number 26 is likely not going to win this one he'd be very unlikely if he did in fact he's uh he's seven seconds behind the race leader so oh, geez yeah seven seconds sorry so got nine four not to be precise, but uh, the Heat 2 of the RF Premier has just 37 seconds left on the clock as I speak. And at the moment it's looking good for the race leader of Callum Drew, having got past Oliver Wayne with a very clever move up the inside of the Etis. Had an attack into Billy's blind, couldn't quite pull it off there, and I managed to make the move stick in just the following couple of seconds. Number 26 of Matthew Hildred having a good race once more up into third place and is uh, not seemingly having too much troubles. Lee Maund has dropped off slightly since being overtaken. Over a second behind in fact. Matthew Daniel in fifth place number 52. How much trouble does he have? Not too much. The group is dispersing ever so slightly all of the carts individually uh, chasing out one another but it is now the last lap for each of the drivers as Callum Drew crosses the line and starts the final lap of this race it's looking pretty close though still bit further down the field, battle for sick for example, still pretty close. Liam Long battling with Gerald uh, Owen and Simon Hilton. Number 21, uh, 27 sorry, Gerald Owen really trying to hold on to that position there, but Callum Drew does take the win, Oliver Wayne takes second, third and Matthew Hildred with Lee Moore and Matthew Daniel and Liam Long in fourth, fifth and sixth. Seventh goes to Gerald Owen, Simon Hilton takes eighth, ninth Troy Cole and Simon Frogger rounds out the top 10, but uh, very high pressure and impressive stuff on the RAF Premier in the second heat. Callum Drew taking the win, getting past Oliver Wayne just a few laps from the end, and uh, another great race here at Clay Pigeon.
So the Rotax 177 and 177 Masters are out ready for their second heat. It's Rob Prince alongside Dean Mann on the front row. Daniel Martin and Keith Bishop third and fourth. Fifth and sixth are Gary Cox and Martin Howell and Tim Jaynes versus Joe Wormsley on row four. Row five, Daniel Milner and Julian Howell with Simon Gover and Samuel Dix at the back of the field in starting positions. But of uh, course, eight minutes can change an awful lot in car racing. And the grid positions might prove to be the least of some of the drivers' worries as they make their way through the race. As they head their way down very quietly, in fact, and rather slowly up to the top end. It will not be like that in just a few seconds' time with Rob Prince alongside Dean Mann on the front row and uh, it will be interesting to see this time how Julian Howell can deal with the fact that, that uh, Daniel Martin is starting in third place significantly better position and uh, how will he be able to compete this time away they go and the 177s are away for the second heat Daniel Martin already in the lead of the race. How's that for efficiency? Straight away off the grid. Sweeping around the outside of Billy's and takes an early lead. Number 27 is his closest rival at the moment, Dean Mann, having started on the front row. But uh, whether that will be for very long, who knows. So number 26 of oh, Samuel Dix and uh, Simon Gova already. Uh, the two coming together there in the uh, towards the exit of the uh, the entrance, sorry, of the horseshoe. But they came together, but both carts are still running. So uh, fortunately, we are able to continue with that. But uh, Daniel Martin, number 70, he uh, has already managed to establish a very, very significant lead for himself, and uh, in the lead of the race. Let's see if he can maintain that position. Although history would tell us that that shouldn't be a problem for the number 70. Joe Wormsley has managed to gain two positions up into second place now on the number 33. Julian Howell is already up into four, having started in, uh, I think, eighth place. He had his uh, rear grid start uh, in this race. So um, he'll have the... I believe the either the mid or the front start for Heat 3. Daniel Martin goes across the line in number 70. Heads off with Joe Wormsley and Gary Cox. Julian Howell, Daniel Milner, Dean Mann, Tim James, Martin Howell, Simon Gover and Samuel Diggs. No changes in order on that previous lap, but uh, the drivers are relatively close together. Joe Wolsey is already over four seconds behind the race leader, but has only uh, two seconds, separating himself down to sixth position. So it's close from second, or well, second certainly down to fourth is pretty close. As uh, number 19 of Julian Howell rounds out that battle for second place, although there is a relatively close cart two in Daniel Milner. In the fifth place, who isn't too far behind Julian Howell, but uh, not really close enough to make a challenge, that's for sure. Julian Howell will try, I'm sure, to get past uh, Gary Cox and Joe Wormsley, and that'll put him in great stead for the final uh, positions later on in the day, where Daniel Martin, of course, having only finished uh, fourth in the previous heat, Julian Howell could very well hold the advantage, but uh, even regardless, Daniel Martin, he manages to get the job done. Regardless of where he starts, he started in third for this race, and look at him, already in the lead, and uh, seemingly on his way to his first victory of the day. <laughs> and now, four minutes exactly to go, so we're halfway, well, four and a half minutes, sorry, to go, so uh, coming up to halfway race distance, Daniel Martin, though, is leading the way, has the fastest lap, 35.6 compared to the next nearest, which is a 35.87. So, uh, well, two tenths quicker than anyone else in terms of 
fastest lap, opening up his lead every time. It's looking good for the number 70.
So Daniel Martin took the win in that one, then a comfortable 2.9 second victory ahead of Joe Wormsley, Junior Howell taking third. We move on to the Senior TKM second heat. Where we will see if Luke Barton will be able to replicate his very, very comfortable victory earlier on today. Uh, the grid is as follows Will Davis ahead of Will Fox with Luke Barton and Derek Hunt should be starting fourth although his car didn't look particularly healthy as he left the pit lane being uh, persuaded to try and catch up to the back of the field they may have to go around again though but uh, Jonathan Fox he uh, will start on the back of the field although whether that will be the case or not now they are being told to go around again, so uh, they will go around once again. Now the grid should be set to get underway with the Senior TKM at second heat. Heading down towards the line though and we should be underway now and indeed we are a little bit of uh, bumper barging between Luke Barton and Derek Hunt there off the start but uh, it's a good getaway from Will Fox the number 50 Will Davis battling against him but couldn't quite manage to uh, get ahead of Will Fox. Will Fox now does take an early race lead but how long before Luke Barton tries to threaten uh, the top positions we know how quick he is. Will Fox in the lead though ahead of Will Davis. Luke Barton already I think had the lead at this stage in the first heat so already the yeah, rest of the competitors doing one step better but uh, Will Davis is now overtaken by Luke Barton. How much quicker will Barton be than the rest of the field if at all? Hunt tries to go the inside of Will Davis. Looks like he's made that move stick as well. Hunt's trying to maintain that position though and he can't quite do it but uh, Will Davis therefore takes that position back, back into third place. Hunt stays fourth, fifth, still Jonathan Fox. But uh, Will Fox does lead the way. Luke Barton is in second place. And uh, those two are very much the quickest in heat. Number one, Luke Barton significantly so. With a, uh, <laughs> a uh, very large margin of victory earlier on. But uh, will it be the same again? Now he's got Will Fox to deal with. And uh, in heat one, he's already almost disappeared into the distance by this stage so um, now with some real competition in Will Fox how will the number 18 handle it? They go into the top end as they make their way onto the pit straight once more Will Fox versus Luke Barton. Luke Barton certainly looking like he's in an attacking frame of mind here he doesn't make a uh, potential move though uh, Derek Hunt goes back up the inside of uh, Jonathan Fox having lost that position but Fox went very wide into Billy's so Hunt gratefully takes that position back Will Fox still battling with Luke Barton though Luke Barton's in a promising position will he be able to go around the outside of the horseshoe or indeed cut back as he attempts to do but there's just not quite enough pace to do it Will Fox is still a very fast driver and um, he has managed to stay ahead in this particular occasion but uh, for how much longer Luke Barton certainly knocking on all the doors that he can. Will Fox is uh, just about ahead at the moment and as they go into the S's still does maintain the lead. Will William Davis come into play as well? 
I mean, it's certainly got to consider that the man in third place who's uh, really not dropping off too much off the top two. Uh, Luke Button uh, looks at the inside of the horseshoe but can't quite do anything there. Making their way down the pit straight once more to complete their fifth lap. And still the top two, and indeed the rest of the field, remain in the same order. Will Fox followed by Luke Barton, Will Davis, Derek Hunt and Jonathan Fox. And that is the order as things stand. Will Luke Barton be able to get past Will Fox by the end of this race? You'd imagine Will Fox would have a really tough time in keeping Barton behind for all of that period of time. But, uh, well, not impossible, just very difficult. Luke Barton... A very capable driver now. He does look to the inside. Will he be able to get the move done this time? No. Will Fox takes a relatively defensive line and sticks in the lead of the race. This helps Will Davis, meanwhile, who's in third place and um, who's seeing the top two squabble and therefore lose a bit of time. Will Fox driving very defensively and uh, not giving Luke Barton the opportunity really to pass him. So this means the rest of the field can bunch up and gives even more opportunities for the drivers to pass. But Will Fox... Certainly opting for a defensive drive as things are. And, uh, well, that could potentially be the only way to keep Luke Barton behind him. He just doesn't have the pace of the number 18 at the moment. The fastest lap belongs to Jonathan Fox. 36.22. That was set on the previous lap. So uh, that really says something about the competitiveness of this field. The fifth place driver in a field which is separated by just... Oh, under two seconds is the fastest driver on the track although admittedly Luke Barton hadn't really had any fresh air to uh, to experiment with in um, the race so far he's been too busy occupied with other drivers and trying to get past them such as Will Fox at the uh, this current moment in time managed to get past Will Davis relatively easily or so he made it look like but um, Will Fox is providing very much more defensive and fiercely defensive challenge as well Will Fox even taking defensive line going into the horseshoe despite Luke Barton not being in a particularly attacking fashion there Derek Hunt seeming to struggle there in fourth place with the uh, pace of Jonathan Fox and Luke Barton, will he, he now has indeed managed to get ahead. Will Davis also following through. So Will Fox has managed to, well he's, he's finally lost that position I should say. Down into third now. I didn't actually see where that happened. I imagine it was uh, towards a top bend. And uh, obviously Will Davis managed to just follow through. But uh, that doesn't mean Will Fox loses two positions. And uh, behind both of those drivers now. Into the top end they go, all five drivers very close once more, almost evenly separated, all five of them. And, uh, well, I can read out the distances between them, 0 0.39, 0 0.3, 0 0.21, 0 0.21. So, all the drivers separated by about two tenths of a second. Can Hunt get past Will Fox? That's looking like a real potential opportunity. Will Fox, having lost out to Luke Barton, he's... Uh, he's not looks like looking like he's got the most pace in this race he's uh, simply depending on his defensive driving to uh, get him a decent position but now he is looking to attack and uh, trying to get past uh, Will Davis and he slides up but uh, Derek Hunter's going to try and go up the inside and he does manage to do so Jonathan Fox also follows through so Will Fox from first to fifth in uh, just a matter of a few laps Tried to attack Will Davis, unfortunately couldn't pull it off. And uh, Hunt and Jonathan Fox both manage to get past Will Fox and up into third and fourth respectively. In the lead of the race though, Luke Barton, who is ahead of Will Davis. And well, you'd struggle to see how Luke Barton would lose the lead now. He's opened up his uh, margin of the lead by 0.47 of a second on the previous lap. Derek Hunt up into third and uh, is half a second behind second place to Will Davis. <laughs> a 
Davis could have his work cut out here to keep not only Hunt, but both of the Foxes behind him as well. Well, Davis in second is looking like the most likely driver to be overtaken at this age, although it could easily be Hunt as well. And as I say that, he did almost get past Jonathan Fox. Having a look up the inside, and he does have a look up the inside now of the horseshoe. Can't quite do it there, though. Hunt versus Davis and Jonathan Fox. Will Fox has dropped off ever so slightly and since being overtaken by uh, John Fox, he has uh, lacked a little bit of pace and hasn't been able to catch up to the drivers in a way he might have wanted. But uh, now Hunt will try and go up the inside. He does manage to get past Davis. Davis goes relatively wide at Billy's and um, loses that position. So Hunt up into second now. But uh, looking like there could be an opportunity for Davis to take that move back. Can he do that? To regain that position. Regain second place. Uh, to be closest behind Luke Barton. Pretty exciting racing for a grid which only contains five drivers I must say. And uh, this is the last lap. In fact, the checkered flag does come out. And uh, Luke Barton takes the win. Derek Hunt takes second position. Third goes to Will Davis. Fourth, Jonathan Fox. And Will Fox takes fifth place. And that was pretty unexpected result, considering um, how the standings were six, seven laps ago with Will Fox in the lead and driving defensively. You could have seen that as potential for him to just go on for the rest of the race like that, defending from uh, Luke Barton, but Barton does take two wins out of two, and credit to him. Derek Hunt takes second for the first time today. Will Davis takes third ahead of Jonathan Fox, and Will Fox rounds out the grid. Next up, though, will be the uh, Junior Max for the final of the second heat, and then we'll be on to the third heat of the day, starting with the Honda and Miami Cadets. Next up then, the Junior Max second heat and it's Bradley Shepard alongside Angus Fry on the front row. Harry Wilson-Brown, Michael Goodburn and Fraser Danoon are the rest of the drivers. And away we go then with the second heat. Bradley Shepard from pole position already has lost that place. Angus Fry swinging his car on the outside. And a very, very good start from Angus Fry. But Bradley Shepard is going to try and go back up the inside. Will he be able to do so? No, he won't. Angus Fry uh, does well there. He manages to just put his life on the line, keeps his cart on the racing line, despite Bradley Shepard really trying to get up the inside, and uh, Angus Fry does maintain the race lead. Could Angus Fry be on his way to two victories out of two already? Well, he was significantly the fastest driver in Heat 1 and uh, is almost becoming a replica of Luke Barton. But uh, in this case, he's uh, he is in the lead at an earlier opportunity. Luke Barton, of course, in the previous race had to get past uh, Will Fox and spent quite a while doing so. But uh, no such issues for Angus Fry. In uh, this race, in, in the Junior Max. Wilson Brown and Bradley Shepard battling for second though. Wilson Brown 
Having got past Bradley Shepard. Hasn't managed to get away though. Shepard still battling the back of the number uh, 27 to try and see if he can get past. Michael Goodburn and Fraser Danoon, of course, had a pretty interesting race earlier on where Goodburn just flew past Danoon and uh, managed to get away and almost actually caught up to Wilson Brown for second place, but uh, alas, could not quite. Uh, do it in the time that was allocated. He'll need to see if he can find that pace at an earlier time in this particular race to see if he can get into a more promising position. But uh, number 27 of Harry Wilson Brown is his nearest opponent now, uh, Michael Goodburns. So whether he'll be able to get past and up into third place and maybe finish that unfinished business, which he feel he might have after the first heat. But uh, Angus Fry at the moment in the lead of the race ahead of Bradley Shepherd and Harry Wilson Brown having got past Bradley Shepherd but losing that position again under a bit of pressure from Michael Goodburn potentially. Angus Fry in the lead though, the Union Jack flag on his helmet. And he's racing like a British Olympian athlete, uh, all of which have been doing very well recently, of course, at the Rio Olympics. That's uh, Angus Fry is not perhaps on the same kind of level, but uh, certainly is doing a very good job of uh, dominating the Junior Max second heat at the moment. Not having any troubles at all dealing with the opposition and just seems to have the pace that uh, the rest of them lack. Although, having said that, Bradley Shepard did uh, set a 35.58, which is the fastest lap of the race so far. Only one hundredth of a second faster than the race leader, mind you, but uh, just goes to show Angus Fry maybe not as dominant as, well, particularly I thought. I thought that uh, Angus Fry getting into the lead would mean a replication and uh, once again another very, very comfortable victory for the number 46. But uh, perhaps might be a slightly different story. Bradley Shepard certainly seems to have his, uh, his racing head on. Seems to be really trying to do his best to catch up. And Angus Fry spins through no fault of any other driver he uh, just takes too much of the curb the inside of the s's and uh spins the cart round he'll be gutted at that and well little tilt back of his head i think actions speak louder than words in that case and um you can see you can almost see the disappointment of angus fry through the helmet there just trying a little bit too hard back and uh, spins the car around now back into fifth place. Bradley Shepard, the number 53, now does take the race lead ahead of Harry Wilson Brown, Michael Goodburn, and Fraser Danoon. And if nothing else, it makes the uh, the potential standings for the um, the final grid later on today very much interesting, considering that Bradley Shepard didn't finish the race earlier on, and Angus Fry. Could potentially be on for a fifth place in this one. Of course, uh, taking a uh, retirement, I do believe, uh, gives you the equivalent points of last place if you uh, retired first. So, um, could well be tied on points uh, at the end of this race. Could come down to heat three to decide the positions. But uh, as I've said, positions with a grid this small, really not the most essential thing in a race. And one of the more really crucial factors in a 13 minute final fitness and talent and of course a bit of luck to go along the way the cart set up always with strong influence you know, a day like this with a not a strong wind but a slight tailwind means that the carts will get pushed down the sturmy straight and uh, the pit straight sorry so they'll have more speed going down the pit straight. Means they've got to set up the cart to fit that particular condition. 
to make their way round. Angus Fry, he is catching up, understandably, uh, with Fraser to noon and pretty rapidly too. 0.36 of a second on that previous lap, but will he have enough time to catch up with De Noon with the time that's left? Only 1 minute and 14 seconds remain. And uh, certainly Bradley Shepard is looking like the victory is coming to him in this particular race. Number 27 of Harry Wilson Brown in second place with Michael Goodburn third, fourth Fraser De Noon fifth Angus Fry, but uh, the battle between second is the most prominent, I imagine. Wilson Brown versus Goodburn was the same scenario towards the end of he won, but uh, Goodburn not in such a powerful position that he can overtake as things stand. It's looking good for Bradley Shepard though. Last lap of the Junior Max second heat now, and uh, clock is ticking down to what will be a victory for Bradley Shepard. Checkered flag is out, and Shepard does take the win. Taking second place will just about be Wilson Brown, but Goodburn just couldn't quite get past him in the end. Tanoon does finish ahead of Fry. Fry, after that spin, was reeling him in at a pretty quick rate, about four tenths. Uh, per lap, but um, just couldn't quite catch up with Tanoon before the timer hit zero, unfortunately for him. So Fry takes fifth after it looked like he was in such a good position, but taking yet another victory. But now we move on to the rounds of third heat, where we start with the Honda and Army Cadets. Then we turn our attention to the Honda Cadets and the Iami Cadet third heat could be yet another highlight. Usually the heats and the, indeed the final of the Honda Cadets are, well, very, very rarely disappointing. Certainly, for the most part, very entertaining. And uh, well, we'll see how this one pans out. But uh, races so far in the Honda Cadets have seen so many competitors who could potentially walk away with the win later on in the final. And this is the final uh, opportunity for any of the drivers to alter their grid spaces later on in the final race number 22 which we will see as the first race after lunch but uh, as the drivers make their way down from the top end spectators starting to crowd around the track and certainly the pit straight to see the start of what will be I'm sure a great race and we are now running and eight minutes put on the clock for the Honda and Iami Cadets as they now get underway. And already number 24, that is Cameron Ross, has got, managed to get a very good uh, getaway and has the race lead. And uh, it's interesting how the Honda Cadets managed to do that, isn't it? Some of the drivers just managed to already establish themselves a pretty decent gap after just a few seconds of the lap of the first lap realistically having actually 
uh, happen, but uh, a little bit of debris is being flicked off one of the carts there. Exit to the horseshoe, but as the carts make their way back down, it's Cameron Ross who leads the way. A gap back to 54. Jake Adams and a very similar gap, and then back to Luke Rendell. Number 66 of Max Moore coming across the line there, but uh, a really good start by Ollie Tyler, getting seven positions completed on the uh, just the first lap. That's what Ollie Tyler's really, really good at. C plated. Cart. He's a very, very capable youngster and uh, gaining seven positions on one lap uh, really does take some doing. Now up into third place and uh, what can he do about the leading pair then? At the moment Cameron Ross has a lead of 0.89 of a second and uh, the number 24 leading the way. Has, uh, may have some company soon from Ollie Tyler. Jake Adams is having to defend from the C-plated cart, but uh, he's trying to get the inside. Now there's a yellow flag waving for a spinner off at Billy's blind, but um, doesn't affect the battle of the leaders. C-plated Ollie Tyler just getting past Jake Adams there for second position. Contact warning for the number 44. That is uh, Liam Deedman down in 17th position. Lost four positions uh, on that previous lap as well. So uh, Deedman not having the best of laps there uh, on the previous lap. And now he's uh, able to rejoin in the Honda Cadets. Uh, class is the one he's in. And meanwhile, in the IAMI Cadets, it's uh, Cameron Crockett who leads the way, meanwhile. Uh, 15th position for the number 88. And a very, very close further down the field. You can see oh, it's almost uh, the field is almost split half and half uh, with the gap back from who is it back from Ewan Charman back to Karen Jenkins, 11th back to 12th, where uh, there's a four second gap. And then from 12th onwards, really is a ferocious battle all the way back down the field. Always switching positions there, but uh, Cameron Ross's race lead might come to an end very shortly. Ollie Tyler in the C-plated cart right behind it, heading down the Sturmy straight. And has more pace, has the fastest lap at the moment, and can he go up the inside now? He does try to go up the inside. Cameron Ross doesn't attempt to defend it, or whether he just didn't see him coming. Who knows, but Ollie Tyler makes quick work and tries now establish a real gap to see if he can get away and take yet another win in the Honda Cadet class as they make their way down from the top end towards Billy's blind down the pit straight and uh, Cameron Ross he's doing a good job of holding on to the back of Ollie Tyler but for how long it's a uh, third place it's Charlie Vaughan ahead of Ethan Leader who's ahead of Jake Adams Theo McCurris who's won both of the races so far of course uh, Ollie Tyler in the C-plated cart leading the race, but hasn't actually won a race uh, today. But he will be on his way to yet another Honda Cadet victory of his season, should he continue in this fashion. Mercurius, though, he's in sixth position. He had a very low down uh, grid place, but certainly has made progress. And will he be able to do anything about the drivers who are in front of him? And, well, going by the previous races we sh could say yes Mercurius is now up into fifth getting past Jake Adams this could be the Mercurius race how much progress can he make before the time is up and will, well, will he be able to catch Ollie Tyler in the lead of the race Ollie Tyler really has a prime opportunity here to take all 30 points in this heat
24, Cameron Ross could be under a bit of pressure here. The number 17 of Charlie Vaughan is closing in, and he's got Ethan Leader for close company. Theo Mercurius is also very close behind. This could turn into a really exciting battle between the uh, the top five. And Ollie Tyler's lead is far from confirmed. Mercurius is in fifth, but uh, Tyler really hasn't... He's escaped and made a gap, but certainly not a huge one. It's a half a second margin back to Cameron Ross, and Cameron Ross could act as his... Uh, well, his barrier effectively to getting to the race leader should he defend heavily from Charlie Vaughan and Ethan Leader but uh, Ethan Leader he's uh, right behind Charlie Vaughan will he be able to uh, make a pass by the time the race is out Mercurius meanwhile has managed to catch right up to the back of Ethan Leader as well could be in for a real four way battle for second position as Ollie Tyler overtakes the back marker there of Max Moore number 66 but the number 74 of uh, Mercurius, he sees the blue flag, knows that there's a back marker coming up, but he's at the back of that uh, group of drivers at the moment in fifth position. He's got to try and take a few risks to get further up the field, surely, to see if he can get three wins out of three, which would be incredible for a Honda Cadet driver. Haven't seen that in a long time, but uh, one minute left on the clock, and Ethan Leader is going to try and go up the inside now, and they almost touch, and he does go up the inside and manage to get past the number 17 of Charlie Vaughan. Can he get past Cameron Ross, though? Cameron Ross still defending for his life. There's still the back marker, uh, making a pretty huge uh, influence in this battle here. The back marker getting involved with the drivers, but there wasn't really much he could do about it, apart from maybe go out a bit wider. But uh, Max Moore does get swamped by those carts now. But no real changes apart from the uh, change for third position. That's a... Uh, uh, Charlie Vaughan being overtaken by Ethan Leader, so Ethan Leader also getting past Cameron Ross as well, but now there's a three abreast battle heading down towards Billy's Blind. Not much time left on the clock, and Cameron Ross is just ahead of Charlie Vaughan at the moment. Will Mercurius manage to find a way through to make their way into the S's? Ethan Leader has second place, but one of the cards goes across the grass. Number 17, I think that is, of uh, Charlie Vaughan, but sent bouncing across the grass there. And Cameron Ross also lost out. It looks like Mercurius is up into third position. And uh, they were very, very close going across the line. They were separated by less than, well, just over one-tenth of a second. They were uh, separated by going over the line. But as uh, they make their way towards the top bend once more, the race lead belongs to Wally Tyler in the C-plated cart. Ethan Leader is in second place, and Mercurius is in third. And going by the current result, Mercurius will get pole position for the final later on, which could be pivotal, of course, in that race. Let's hope that... Uh, uh, not meaning to be mean to Mercurius or anything, but let's hope that he doesn't completely escape and we have some real drama in the final uh, later on. But uh, Cameron Ross in the number 24, losing a couple of positions, but he's still got Charlie Vaughan very much on his case. Vaughan, of course, has to get rid of the grass on his tyres, though, which will affect the grip he has and is un now under a bit of pressure, of potentially overtaking by the number 22 uh, of e Edward Leader, who's also right behind the last lap board, is out and the checkered flag will come out for Ollie Tyler to take his first win of the day. Ollie Tyler takes the checkered flag ahead of Ethan Leader, ahead of Mercurius, who is right behind Leader at the end. Shows how much pace he really has. Cameron Ross takes fourth place over the line, number 24. Number 22, Edward Leader takes fifth, sixth. Charlie Vaughan to Edward Leader did manage to get past Vaughan in the end. Vaughan, who was really fighting for a third place finish, but went bouncing across the grass. One of the drivers had to. Uh, had to go across the grass there. Three drivers simply do not fit into the S's. And unfortunately, Vaughan had to take the hit there. But hopefully for him, he'll have a really good, uh, promising final later on. Jake Adams takes seventh, eighth, Jed Murphy. And uh, Ewan Charman, ninth, tenth, Sean Cuss. Harry James takes eleventh, twelfth, Sonny Smith. Luke Rendell, thirteenth, fourteenth, Karen Jenkins. Daniel Beards, fifteenth, sixteenth, Cameron Crockett. And the highest place, Novice, also winning the IAMI race. Uh, Liam Deedman, 17th, 18th, Daniel Thorne, Mason Perrin, 19th, 20th, Ethan Simmons, Thomas Brand, 21st, and Max Moore in 22nd place, a lap behind the rest of the drivers, but the entire field separated by less than 30 seconds, close racing towards the front as well, really, really a brilliant race, highlights of the day so far from the Honda Cadets.
So the Minimax ready for their third and final heat of the day. And it is going to be Michael Salmon on pole position alongside the E-plated Oakley Pryor, Harrison Collings in third, Tom Adams fourth, fifth, James Crossley, Will Uphill will start in sixth position. Tin and Rourke and Harvey Thornley make up row four and Joseph Hockwood at the back in the junior TKM of course. But the drivers across the acceleration line and away we go then with the drivers and already two carts off. Neither of them make contact with the tyre barrier but one of the carts and no, they do both manage to get uh, going again so fortunately the start of this race not completely uh, wrecking havoc but two carts do come together yellow flag shown but now they are put away both carts able to resume meanwhile the front there's a two-way battle going into the horseshoe and is a uh, number 57 tom adams who's having to defend from the number 27 of uh, michael salmon who started in pole position of course e plated oakley prior hasn't had the best of starts truth be told he's uh, dropped a couple of positions and uh, in fact has dropped several positions and he's down into eighth In fact, Oakley Pryor was involved in that first lap incident, hence why he has dropped so many positions and is down into 8th place now. So uh, he was involved with Will Uphill in that incident. Now Pryor really has his work cut out to try and make it uh, yet another win for him today. Did he win the race uh, early on? Um, I think he's won both of the races so far. Um, has Oakley Pryor and he will have his very much his work cut out to do the same this time but he's already caught up to the back of uh, the rest of the field who weren't involved in the incident hence uh, why he's right at the back of now of Joseph Hockwood and uh, Harvey Thornley in fact he's already managed to get past Hockwood can he get past uh, Thornley now it looks like he will be able to so uh, already Oakley Pryor up into sixth what progress can he make from there the number 27 of Muggle Salmon Battling with Tin and Rourke to try and maintain the position of third. But, uh, let's see, I just scratched my arm. Um, anyway, number 57 of Tom Adams, who is leading the race ahead of the number 95 of Collins. Collins has always been there or thereabouts throughout the day, hasn't he? He's been uh, fighting with the uh, rest of the field. Maybe not quite up to the uh, pace, the sheer pace that Oakley Pryor has supplied throughout the day, but certainly. A very obviously capable driver with the Minimax class out here today. And uh, in second place, well, he's not particularly catching up with the race leader, Tom Adams. Adams is opening up his lead, 0.87 of a second. His, uh, his gap back to Collins. Then Michael Salmon uh, has lost the position to Tin and Raw. So Raw from number 56 is uh, over a second behind Collins in second position. But... Uh, he is now in third ahead of Salmon, uh, but they've all got to consider that Oakley Pryor is on the warpath now. He is uh, he's going to be, I imagine, fairly frustrated after that uh, first lap incident, but maybe he will also, alternatively, be quite excited at the prospect that he'll be having to fight his way through the field to get towards the top. And certainly that won't phase the very talented youngster, E-plated. Uh, Oakley Pryor who lit had a little bit of a wobble there trying to go up the inside of the number 42 42 of James Crossley who's sitting in 5th place so Pryor trying to go up the inside this time can't do it again Crossley maintains his position for now but uh, the top 3 look very much distanced uh, from one another but uh, not too distanced that it's going to be really obvious what positions they're going to finish up in but uh, certainly not close enough to even consider a move at the moment just to try and uh, catch up with one another as much as they can. Oakley Pryor has managed to get past Crossley now. Will Oakley Pryor manage to get past Michael Salmon, who is his next opponent? Salmon coming up the number 27, bounces across the curb, but that gives Pryor an opportunity to go on the inside. Pryor does take that position. Pryor now up into fourth place. And our next opponent, number 56, Tina Rourke. You can imagine he's only going to keep going in one position, uh, one direction even, and that is further up the field. 
keep overtaking each of the drivers as he comes across them. And, uh, oh well, on, in terms of race pace, the fastest lap does belong to the race leader, Tom Adams. A fastest lap of a 36.44. And Oakley Cry has a fastest lap of a 36.5. So he's got the second fastest uh, personal best lap time. But uh, ultimately, fast lap times don't mean a lot, certainly when it comes to points. Just surely the pace that is uh, on the race track. Oakley Pryor still uh, hasn't quite caught up to Tin and Rock at the moment. It's going to be steady progress, I'm sure. But there's only 2 minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. I say only 2 minutes 50. Still a lot can happen, uh, especially with the races that are out there on the track. But... Um, it's looking good for Tom Adams at the moment, isn't it? Prior catching up to the back of Rourke, however. Rourke might have his work cut out to keep the E-plated uh, Prior behind him. Rourke versus Prior, and Adams does lead the way ahead of Collings. Now Rourke versus Prior. Prior to switching to the inside, going down with Billy's blind. Looks like Prior's going to try and make that move stick. He does go the inside. Can he maintain it? Yes, he does into the S's. He does just about hold the advantage. And Rourke is demoted down into fourth. Collings is the next driver who has to worry about the E-plated prior. He's won both of the races so far. And um, he'll be looking to well, certainly make it two wins in a maybe a second place. That's far from impossible. And, well, indeed, a first is not impossible, but Tom Adams, you'd imagine that gap now is too big. 3.69 of a second back to Collings, and that's only second place. Pryor still has to uh, overtake him to get up into that position, but uh, he does now hold the fastest lap, Pryor. He is the fastest man on the circuit, a 36.37. Tom Adams also set a fast lap time, a 36.4, but uh, three hundredths of a second off the personal best of third place prior. Prior's going to try and grab the inside of Collins here. He's made that move again, almost a repeat of the move he made on Tin and Rourke, who since has fallen into fourth place, has uh, has not lost time to Collins, but uh, hasn't gained a huge amount. In fact, he might have gained a, uh, a small portion, but certainly not enough that he's going to be able to imminently overtake Collins. But uh, it does mean that Prior now up into second place and is able to be able to see Tom Adams just about in the uh, in the distance ahead of him. He's probably the distance of the semi straight ahead, but uh, Tom Adams is the ultimate achievement of beating in this race for Oakley Pryor. However, I don't think it's possible for this one. This might not be the last lap. 15 seconds left on the clock. He, I think he'll probably get across the line before that clock hits zero. So. There will be one more lap after this one. Pryor will continue, I imagine, to catch up with the race leader, but not quite enough. As it goes over the line, it is indeed two seconds left on the clock. So uh, there will be one more lap following this one. As the clock has to hit zero and then have an extra lap, of course. Tom Adams leading the way though and uh, for the first time today it looks like Adams is on his way to his own very decent comfortable victory and at the moment the margin between himself and Pryor 4.3 se uh, seconds so last lap board comes out and um, it stays exactly the same margin so Pryor and Adams you can see how close they are in terms of pace it'll be interesting to see the final later on they, they will uh, almost undoubtedly start on uh, first and second place unless there's been some penalties I don't know about um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see which one of them just has the edge in the final because that will ultimately give them the victory you'd imagine with the Minimax really closely fighting here Harrison Collings is in third and uh, Tin and Rourke fourth and they haven't lost out a huge amount since they've been uh, in those positions but uh, Rourke and Collings battling across the line 
Collins does take third though. Uh, Tom Adams takes the check and flag. Meanwhile, uh, in the lead, Ollie Oakley Fry takes second. Third, Harrison Collins. Tina Rourke does take fourth ahead of James Crossley. Will Uphill takes sixth. Another relatively disappointing race for him. Just didn't quite have the pace which he'd like. Michael Salmon seventh from pole. Uh, position of course so losing a few positions over the course of the race Joseph Hockwood in the junior TK makes his first finish of the day and Harvey Tomley, uh, Thornley sorry Hertz takes uh, ninth position Senior Max Heat 3 about to get underway and it's Oliver Holden on pole, obviously one of the favourites as well, so whether he will be able to walk to victory we shall see. Gary Ford is alongside Thomas Martin, Harry Barker on row 2, Oliver Holden versus Gary Ford on the front row though and who will get the better getaway? Oliver Holden has the inside line and he will try and uh, maintain that going into the S's. Harry Barker in the number 14 has lost a couple of positions there from his relatively decent uh, starting place of fourth, but uh, as Gary Ford in second place manages to maintain that position, Thomas Martin will try and go up the inside. The number 69 will be able to make that move stick. He does indeed up into second place. So Oliver Holden versus Thomas Martin already the battle in the uh, top two there. Oliver Holden making a good getaway from the start though, and the number 23 has a decent margin uh, over second place. Thomas Martin even as early as the end of the first lap. Uh, well, it's going to be Gary Ford, who's in third place at the moment. Harry Style, uh, Hattie Style, sorry, in fourth place. Uh, having got past Harry Barker on the previous lap. And uh, well, we can see that the race leader of Holden is uh, in the lead at the moment, but will he be able to maintain that pace? Thomas Martin is in second position and uh, is not far behind at all of course very very early days in the heat three here but uh, Thomas Martin versus Oliver Holden who will have the pace because uh, the pace could really contribute to the final position here being so close together on the field of course sometimes pace even if uh, you are quicker than one of the drivers if you're really far down a field of a large grid then it can be very hard to really utilize the uh, ability of yourself and the cart to maximum and uh, manage to find, find your way through the crowd but neither of these drivers have to worry about that it's sheer Holden versus Martin and uh, Gary Ford and Harriet Stiles to uh, again quick drivers third and fourth place Hattie Stiles has uh, perhaps permission to feel a little bit disappointed so far with her, how her day has gone but um, in fourth position certainly not a bad place to be in and uh, can she make progress to catch up to the back of Gary Ford well we shall see but she's uh, ahead of Harry Barker and Lee Hodge and Ryan Hodge of course Ryan Hodge uh, had a very good race last uh, time out number 25 and I believe finished maybe third or fourth so uh, might have been as high as third place for a novice is uh, not bad at all. Of course, the Hodges evolved in uh, working at Clay Pigeon, so they know their karting. They're not newbies to the sport. 
and uh, you can expect them to maybe do well than the average novice would do. There's a contact warning for the number 25, Ryan Hodge, and uh, I'm being told that he's gained that contact warning as a result of uh, some contact between himself and his brother. Uh, Liam Hodge, who is in seventh place. Ryan Hodge got past Lee Hodge, but maybe it was deemed an unfair overtake. But getting a contact warning uh, because of passing your brother, that is uh, not the best sporting gesture. Although I suppose that if it's on your brother, then it's no hard feelings between you. Uh, Harriet Starr still battling with Ari Barker. That's for fourth place. Indeed, the battle for fourth is heating up with uh, several other drivers. Ryan Hodge, Lee Hodge. Andy Ward and Amelia Vincent all in the running. Tyler Trotter's uh, over 2.3 seconds behind Amelia Vincent, so not really in with a shout, but the battle fourth down to ninth. Any of those drivers could realistically take that position. There's a bit of a gap from third to fourth. Gary Ford to Stiles is uh, almost a second. And uh, indeed, seventh to eighth, uh, Lee Hodge to Andy Ward is 0.7 of a second, so maybe not totally uh, likely that that could form a uh, opportunity for Andy Ward to suddenly leap up into fourth, but it's certainly still a battle to watch. Harriet Stiles versus Ari Barger versus Ryan Hodge and Lee Hodge. And uh, no changes as of yet, and there haven't been any changes in the order for a good few laps now. See if there will be an overtake uh, in the imminent few laps. But three minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock, just over halfway through the race. And well, what changes can we expect to see with the clock ticking down? Oliver Holden, number 23, ahead of Thomas Martin. And, uh, Thomas Martin, ever so slightly gaining time on the previous lap, nine hundredths of a second. Um, and uh, what is quite funny, another contact warning, 52, Lee Hodge this time. And uh, having managed to get past Ryan Hodge again with some illegal overtaking, gets another contact warning uh, on his bro. Obviously a bit of payback there, uh, but now both sit on a warning for this race. Uh, just make sure that uh, you, make, <laughs> you behave on the circuit and don't uh, end up getting disqualified or disqualifying each other due to uh, those actions, but uh, I'm sure it's just light-hearted. Looks like there's parts in trouble here though. Might be the number 18 of Harriet Styles going very, very slowly and is looking to pull the cart over perhaps. Is indeed so Harriet Styles out of the running. That's unlucky. Was running in fourth place. Uh, so a relatively good position and are now out of the running. So unfortunate for her. Becomes the first uh, casualty of the Heat 3 Senior Max uh, race in this meeting as well. And uh, so now Tyler Trotter's promoted back up into ninth place. Amelia Vincent up into 8th. And uh, so on, all of the drivers making their way up the field. This is good news for Gary Ford, though. Means that his uh, third place is much less under threat. He now has a gap back to Harry Barker of just under half a second. But uh, Barker didn't have the pace of Harry Styles before. But now I say that, Harry Barker looking really competitive. Um, with Gary Ford now having a look at the inside of Billy Flying. Looks like he's going to try and make that move. Gary Ford will try and retake it though into the S's. Can't quite do it. Ari Barker has a bit more pace. And uh, Barker does maintain that position. So Ari Barker passed Gary Ford for third position. Just as I was saying, it was good news for Gary Ford because uh, Harry, uh, Harry Styles out of the running. But it does look like that, uh, that Gary Ford has now lost that position down into fourth place. And uh, will he see himself lose any more positions? Of course, the battle for fourth was raging very heavily. Two Hodges, Andy Ward, Amelia Vincent still in the uh, contest for it. The battle between Ari Barker and Gary Ford could continue, but the battle between the top two may be not as epic as you perhaps would expect. Oliver Holden ahead of Thomas Martin. And it has just remained like that. They keep, occasionally they'll open up the gap. Occasionally Thomas Martin will find a bit of pace and close the gap. Or Oliver Holden will have a tiny little wobble, meaning that uh, it will close the gap some more. But overall the gap has 
more or less stayed steady. 1.67 seconds is the margin if it stayed around one and a half seconds for the majority of the race. So Oliver Holden and Thomas Martin, very, very similar pace. And, uh, well, fastest lap does belong to the race leader, Oliver Holden, 35 0 to 8 You could argue, therefore, he deserves to be in the lead. And certainly, you'd have a case for you there. Oliver Holden does deserve to be in the lead. He's, uh, he's had some really great races so far uh, today, showing his pace and quality behind the wheel. And he's uh, doing that once again ahead of Thomas Martin. It's the last lap now, though. And uh, Oliver Holden will be on his way to yet another victory in the number 23. Number 14, Avary Barker's on his way to a third place, though, ahead of Gary Ford, number 54, who's, uh, well, Gary Ford, having lost that position to Harry Barker, has uh, just lost a bit of pace, hasn't been able to catch back up to Barker. Number 25 of Ryan Hodge, though, is... Uh, on his way to taking a fifth place and another decent result from the number 25. But Oliver Holden takes the win ahead of Thomas Martin, taking the check and flag ahead of Harry Barker and Gary Ford, Ryan Hodge, Lee Hodge, Andy Ward, and Amelia Vince are very close together across the line, and they're only separated by uh, uh, 1.3 seconds, the four drivers there. Tyler Trotter will come across the line to conclude the race. And number 99 comes across the line in ninth, and Harriet Styles, of course, the only retirement and therefore takes the points for 10th place, but the drivers will go in. And uh, Oliver Holden taking the victory ahead of Thomas Martin, 23 ahead of the 69 of Thomas Martin. Harry Barker in third, the number 14, and Gary Ford in fourth place. And we'll be underway shortly with the RAF premiere, the Heat 3. And it's going to be Matthew Hildred on the front row alongside Liam Long, Matthew Daniel, Troy Cole, Callum Drew, and uh, Oliver Wayne to make up the top six. And it uh, looks like they are away racing. And we could be in for yet another exciting race with uh, these drivers. Oliver Wayne. You yeah, have some great entertainment in the previous race versus uh, Drew, of course. Callum Drew this time starting in fifth place. So uh, all, it seems that all the very quick drivers are starting towards the front of the grid. Simon Hilton, another fast driver, number 65, starting in ninth. It seems that he's a little bit further down, but uh, be a very interesting race this one. See how it pans out. Matthew Hildreth is in the lead, the number 26. As, uh, as things stand, I think he took the win, didn't Hildred take the win in uh, heat number one, I believe, and Troy Cole uh, is in second. And it's uh, Liam Long who is in third place, having lost the position to Troy Cole. Matthew Daniel is in fourth place, number 52. Callum Drew in fifth. Oliver Wayne is in sixth place then in the number one. And let's see if he can make any more progress after losing out on the win uh, in the previous heat. Only coming second and fourth to come and through. Coming through is uh, currently in fourth place, still ahead of Wayne, who must be starting to feel a bit of dislike towards always being behind the number 24, or has been so far in the races today.
into the top end they go. Nothing to separate the top five as the 26 of Matthew Hilger comes across the line. Liam Long, Tory Cole, Callum Drew and Oliver Wayne. All the top five separated by just over a second. The top four separated by 0.8 of a second. So it really is very close. Anyone could uh, take the win at this stage. All up for grabs. There's a, uh, a relatively big gap though back to Matthew Daniel from Oliver Wayne. So it might just be worth watching the uh, top five in terms of a real uh, close battle towards the front of the pack. But uh, it, is a, it is a small gap then back to Matthew Daniel and then Simon Hilton, Sam Froggett battling for 7th and 8th. Another good battle I'm sure, but we're going to focus on the real leaders of the race here. Hildred versus Long and Long of course had a second place earlier on and he won and now he's up into the lead of the race. He's managed to get past Hildred and is up into the lead. Liam Long uh, leading for the first time today the number 60. And uh, as they head into the horseshoe, it looks like Hildred's going to try and make that move back. And he does, but Hildred might have to drift out wide. Long couldn't quite retake the move, though. And Long, therefore, has to settle for second for now. In the lead of the race, though, Hildred ahead of Long, number 24. Drew is back, and Drew having won the second. He's obviously having to the act on this side as well. Oh, could be in for a really, really great race here. Still a lot of time left as well. Four minutes and 45 seconds on the clock, but uh, currently Hildred leads. Drew trying to go up the inside of Long. Long having to be forced out wide, but Willie trying to go up the inside of the horseshoe. That is the rest trying to go up the inside of uh, of the hairpin. If you don't make the move stick, you could be on the outside for the horseshoe, which puts you at a huge disadvantage, especially if you're battling with other drivers as well. Hildred is uh, in the lead though, and he's ahead of Liam Long, ahead of Cameron Drew, and then Wayne is just behind, number 28 of Troy Cole is then in fifth place, Matthew Daniel in sixth, still those top six are very close together, Matthew Daniel somewhat closing in on the uh, the top five, but so now trying to go the inside, Liam Long trying to go the inside of uh, Hilton, no, Hildred, sorry, Hilton's further down, but uh, Hildred, and then Long is now up into the lead of the race. Cameron Drew, Callum Drew up into second position now, having got past Hildred. And so and now Drew could really be on for two wins out of three in the uh, RAF class. Callum Drew in second place. And any of the top six still really could win it. Uh, that close together, the gap at sixth to seventh is over 2.7 seconds. So. Uh, that's unlikely to be a winner from 7th onwards. Lee Maund currently is in 7th place. But uh, the top 6 really battling well. And now Callum Drew is in the lead of the race. Having got past Lee Long. And uh, Liam Long is uh, having to defend off Matthew Hildren as well. The ex-race leader. Great racing from the RAF boys here. As they head into the S's, what is for the ninth time? Callum Drew leading the way, Liam Long in second position, Matthew Hildred in third, fourth Oliver Wayne, Troy Cole and Matthew Daniel in fifth and sixth. Wayne is uh, far from guaranteed his place is fourth or higher. And they really could come into play that Troy Cole and Matthew Daniel are not far behind whatsoever. 28 and the 52. Making their way down the pit straight once more. Two minutes and 33, two, three minutes and 35 seconds, no, sorry, left on the clock. Making their way into the S's. Drew followed by Long. And then Hildred, Wayne, Cole and Daniel. And shockingly enough, no one's actually changed positions in the last couple of laps. And well, it seems that Drew is actually getting away. And uh, well, having had the pace from a heat too, obviously, is reusing that back in the lead and um, he's managing to get away from the rest of the field who just don't have the legs that he does through he's away and he's flying 35 to 7 he said on that previous lap 35 to 7 is very quick indeed that's a uh, a pretty decent senior rotax time the RAF carts are nothing to be sniffed at Liam Long in second place is having to defend ever so slightly from Matthew Hildred and Oliver Wayne. And uh, Wayne has opened up a bit of a gap back to Troy Cole and uh, another margin then back to Matthew Daniel. But uh, it does seem that Callum Drew at the moment is in the lead and comfortably so. 
He's uh, he's in the lead, hoping to continue with that. A 1.5 second advantage is back to Liam Long, who's his nearest competitor to second place. But Long has other things on his plate than worrying about the race leader at the moment because he's got Matthew Hildred and Oliver Waynes in the number one. Not far behind him whatsoever. And buttons into the top end they go. And now they make their way down the pit straight once more. This is for the 12th time of asking. 45 seconds left on the clock, so not long to go. And that uh, looks pretty good for Colum Drew to take his second win in uh, as many races. Liam Long in the number 60. And Liam Long squabbling here with uh, other drivers. Liam Long uh, loses the position to Hildred, also squabbling with Wayne to just now manage to maintain that position. But uh, seeing that number 60 of Long losing a little bit of pace perhaps, but uh, Wayne is unable to pass. So obviously Long has enough in his locker to keep him at bay. Well, for now anyway. No time left on the clock though, so the last lap will be the next lap. And it's looking pretty good for Callum Drew at the moment. Hildred is just ahead of Liam Long, who is therefore ahead of uh, Oliver Wayne. Making their way into the top bend once more. The last lap board will be shown to the drivers. And number 24 of Callum Drew is on his way to another victory here. Matthew Hildred in second place, ahead of Liam Long, ahead of Oliver Wayne, Troy Cole, Matthew Daniel, Lee Morn, Ben Scott, very close together. Battle for seven, 0.12 seconds separate those two. Gerald Owen is in ninth, having got by Sam Frogger on the previous lap, who rounds out the top ten. It's looking good for Callum Drew to take two wins out of the latter two heats. Hildred will take second by the looks of things. Race dying down slightly towards the latter stages, but uh, nonetheless a very high adrenaline race, that one. As Drew does take the win ahead of Hildred, Long, Wayne, Cole and Daniel is the order. So are no changes in that last lap. Morn to take seventh, eighth, Scott. Owen takes 9th, 10th, Sam Frogger, Robert Small takes 11th, 12th, Sean Griffin, Simon Hilton, Owen Lang, and Isabel Stora make out the rest of the field. But Callum Drew takes a very, very uh, entertaining win here in the RAF Heat 3. Matthew Hildra takes 2nd, 3rd, Liam Long, 4th, Oliver Wayne, 5th, Troy Cole, and Matthew Daniel. And they were the 6 to watch from the start. Those 6 drivers, absolutely great racing. And a fast slap belongs to Callum Drew as well. A very good result for the number 24. All round, very good result. The Road Axe 177, Heat 3. The uh, carts are out and the grid is as follows. Martin Howell is on the front row alongside Tim Jaynes, Simon Gover, Gary Cox, Daniel Milner and Julian Howell uh, make up the top six. Joe Wormsley, Daniel Martin, another driver to watch of course, sitting in eighth, Keith Bishop and Rob Prince make out the top ten. And away we go then with the 177, third heat of the day. And Tim Jaynes, Martin Howell, 
were the top two across the line, but it looks like Tim Jaynes has uh, got the advantage, number 99. How much longer, though, is... Uh, you, with these races, you can almost guarantee Julian Howell or Daniel Martin will be one of the two to come storming through the field to victory, but which one will it be? As it is proved, Daniel Martin gaining five positions from the start, and uh, well, Julian Howell gaining five positions also in the lead of the race. So the number 19 of Julian Howell and the number 70 of Daniel Martin both making huge progress from the first lap, and uh, it's just a matter of now who can outwit the other, who can go faster than the other. Tim Jaynes from pole position was in second place at the, uh, the end of that previous lap but now has fallen to third, so he's still in third place holding his ground there uh, in Gary with Gary Cox and Joe Wormsley in fourth and fifth. But uh, for how much longer will Tim Jaynes hold that position? Some very experienced drivers behind him, Gary Cox and Joe Wormsley. I've both been racing here at Clay for a, a good few years now, so really know the track well. Daniel Martin in the lead of the race though, he's got past Julian Howell, and will Howell be able to respond? We haven't seen much of, of uh, Julian Howell racing a lot so far. say that uh, Daniel Martin uh, for the most part does uh, does win perhaps more of the races than Julian Howell but they're certainly the top two no two, no no doubt about that top two are separated by 0.7 of a second and the gap back from Howell to James in third is just over a second uh, two seconds, sorry. So that margin between Howell and James, you know, I would imagine, continue to open up. Regardless of what Howell does, will he be able to really get ahead of Daniel Martin here? To the best of his ability, he'll really have to try hard. Good for Daniel Martin at the moment though, even with uh, just under five minutes to go, already you'd have to put your bets on it being either Daniel Martin or Julian Howell and going by past results and current pace, Daniel Martin would probably be the lowest odds I'd imagine. Joe Wormsley having gained a position, getting past Tim James, now number 33 up into third place. Gary Cox is in fifth, sixth is Daniel Milner and uh, Simon Gover is in seventh, eighth is Dean Mann, Samuel Tix ninth and Martin Howell in tenth.
So about to get underway then with the senior TKM and their third heat. And Derek Hunt has a pole position start for this one alongside Will Fox with Will Davis, Luke Barton and Jonathan Fox making up the rest of the field. like Derek Hunt isn't making it to the start line though so it's going to be the other four drivers who will uh, get going and get underway with uh, the race it has begun so a little bit of uh, confusion there perhaps but the four drivers are now underway and Will Fox versus Luke Barton from the start and you would imagine between those two is the real uh, battle between the perhaps the winner I mean no criticism to uh, Will Davis or Jonathan Fox but perhaps they just lack that cutting edge that uh, Will Fox and Luke Barton truly have and, uh, Will Fox as we know a very good defensive driver managed to keep Luke Barton behind him for quite a period of time in the, the heat two Will Fox now in the lead of the race is still keeping Luke Barton very much behind him. See if Luke Barton can replicate that pace which he has shown on uh, many occasions in the past and has done today as well. He's won both of the races so far. Can he make it three out of three? Well, you certainly would think that it's far from impossible. And behind Will Fox once again, I imagine could be frustrated once again finding himself behind the number 50 but uh, has got to work to get past him and Will Davis and Jonathan Fox are certainly not slow and they'll do as much as they can to try and follow through if a uh, uh, pass is made between uh, Barton getting past Will Fox for example then uh, at the moment Jonathan Fox is in a pretty decent position to be able to follow through as well but uh, the four drivers still very much close together. The only one who would be getting ever so slightly lost is Will Davis but he's still very very much within the uh, a shot of uh, getting a better position out of this. Only 0.4 seconds behind Jonathan Fox. Well, Will Davis does lead the way ahead of Luke Barton who is ahead of Jonathan Fox ahead of Will Davis. That is the current order and it stays the same as they move on to the fifth lap now. Fastest lap belongs to Will Davis. So once again showing how close the drivers are in terms of pace. Driver at the back of the field does hold the fastest lap. So um, really shows the senior TKM class. Very, very competitive indeed. Will Fox up against Luke Barton for the lead of the race. And Luke Barton not quite as attacking as he was in the same scenario in Heat 2. He, uh, he seemed to be trying to get past every given opportunity in that race. But uh, in this one, maybe just holding on a little bit more. Though, as I say that, he does seem to be getting into some rather threatening positions in order to try and get into the race lead he's uh, certainly not going to give up the chance to get past Will Fox should Fox make a small error drift out ever so slightly wide Martin will pounce on that opportunity no doubt about it in the way into Billy's blind into the quick right left of the S's and onto the Sturmy straight once more Will Fox still leading the way ahead of Lou Barton who doesn't make a uh, opportunity out of the hairpin heading into the horseshoe will take a very very similar line into that hence showing that Luke Barton is not going for the uh, the attacking mode at the moment on Will Fox three minutes 45 seconds left on the clock and Fox Barton Fox Davis remains the uh, order as things stand. No changes in order but still pretty tense. None of the drivers have really dropped off or escaped. 
Will Fox has a quick glance over his shoulder to see where Luke Barton is and uh, see that he's right on the rear bumper of the number 50. Around the horseshoe they go and into Buttons where they have the short straight where the old uh, finish line used to be. And then on to the top end, down to the start finish line once again. And they cross the line to complete their eighth lap. Round into Billy's, and still it's the same story. None of the drivers making any opportunities out of any, uh, any mistakes because none of the drivers are making any mistakes. Very close, tight racing, but uh, Luke Barton still not overly attacking on. Uh, Will Fox, Will Fox opting for relatively defensive lines, though not totally parking the bus on his position. Will Button creates an opportunity this time, heading down to Billy's blind and he's got Jonathan Fox still very close behind Luke Barton, now looks even closer than ever right on the rear bumper of the race leader. Jonathan Fox has managed to close in uh, to Luke Barton by a tenth of a second on the previous lap so Jonathan Fox still very much in with a shout of improving his uh, particular position but uh, Will Davis has dropped off a little bit from the top three maybe just doesn't quite have that pace that the top three have at the moment faster lap does still belong to third place Jonathan Fox in the number 88 having set that now five laps ago None of the drivers have set a personal best since lap 6, and it's now lap 10, so drivers, well, they, they are keeping each other up, realistically. Luke Barton opting for a, a slightly deeper line there in the hairpin and sweeping into the horseshoe. It is Will Fox, he still holds the lead, but Luke Barton now has a real opportunity. Can't quite do it, though. Heading down from the top end, now Luke Barton does hit, have an opportunity, trying to go up the inside of the left kick, but it'll put him on the outside for Billy's, can't quite do anything there, Jonathan Fox, he thought for a second might have an opportunity to get past Luke Barton, but can't quite do so, he can't give his, uh, his brother a favour there, and Will Fox does remain in the lead, but with Luke Barton very much breathing down his neck, now Will Fox does take a defensive line, and with less than a minute to go, you can start to see why Jonathan Fox drifts out slightly wide there. Might give an opportunity for Will Davis. Did, but Davis couldn't quite capitalise. Wasn't quite close enough. And uh, now it just means that John uh, Fox has lost a little bit of time. Yeah, now they go across the line. 37 seconds left on the clock. They might still squeeze in another lap. And uh, Will Fox still... Ahead of Luke Barton, and Barton has dropped off ever so slightly off that last lap. Eight tenths of a second, eight uh, hundredths of a second, sorry, uh, slower than Fox on the previous lap. So the race leader currently is really putting his shift in to stay ahead as they make their way down the start finish straight once more. And now Luke Barton, he does give. Will Fox a little nudge, but he does get ahead. So Luke Barton back into the lead of the race. Will he be able to escape now? Take three wins out of three. There's not a lot of time left on the clock. And indeed, this will be the penultimate lap. Clock has hit zero. So make their way down to the horseshoe for what is the 14th time in this race. And Will Fox right behind Luke Barton, but Barton has rightfully gained that position and uh, argue he could deserve three out of three victories here. Luke Barton on his way down through the S is Will Fox following on, who is followed by his brother Jonathan Fox. Will there be any changes in the last lap here? Looks like uh, could potentially not be into buttons and now for the final corner the top end will any changes be made the four carts sneak behind one another very very close but it is going to stay in that order Luke Barton takes the win ahead of Will Fox Jonathan Fox takes third fourth Will Davis and uh, that does conclude the senior TKM third heat Luke Barton taking a well-deserved victory and eventually all three of the carts 
uh, all four of the cards, sorry, separated by less than half a second. Here we are then, and it's the final heat of the day. Race number 21, the Junior Max. And uh, Harry Wilson Brown alongside Randy Shepard on the front row with Angus Fry, Danoon, and Goodburn as the rest of the drivers see how this one pans out. But uh, looks like it's an early lead for Bradley Shepard here. The number 53 has uh, got the early lead on a couple of occasions. Well, namely the second heat, but uh, has usually... Ended up losing it to uh, Angus Fry, and Angus Fry is up into second place. Of course, would have probably won the race had he not spun uh, in the second heat, having taken too much of the curb at the Etis. I doubt he'll be making that mistake again. And, uh, well, Angus Fry, will he be able to make it two out of three wins, or will it be the only one? Because Brandon Shepard was gifted the win in, uh, in heat two, and uh, he might have to put in a significantly bigger shift this time in order to really maintain that lead with Angus Fry on the prowl and looking racy as ever onto the stubby straight they go once more and uh, Bradley Shepard leads from Fry Harry Wilson Brown Danoon Goodburn is the order and a good burn in the Battle of the Novices has usually come out on top of Danoon. But uh, at the moment, Danoon is holding his position. Good burn, it seems, maybe hasn't quite got the uh, overtaking perfected yet. He, uh, managed, he managed to catch up to Harry Wilson Brown on that previous heat. But uh, he just couldn't quite get the final pass in. Managed to. Uh, to catch up, do all the work to catch up to the back of Harry Wilson Brown, but couldn't quite really carve a real opportunity and actually get past the number 27. So, um, let's see if it's a repeat, but uh, he's managed to get past Fraser Noon easily enough. Will he do exactly the same with Wilson Brown, though? Well, we shall see, but uh, in fairness, Wilson Brown defended well in that particular occasion, and good burn. He'll be looking at the back of the number 27, thinking, maybe this time I can. But uh, no such issues with Fraser Danoon. Managed to get past number 14 without so much trouble. Bradley Shepard in the number 53 leads the way. But Angus Fry in second place, a second behind. And, uh, well he should keep closing that gap Fry then Shepard certainly has a race on his hands there and uh, well at the moment to be fair Bradley Shepard opening up the lead Angus Fry 0.18 seconds slower on that previous lap so Bradley Shepard is doing well at uh, holding his lead at the moment and um, isn't having any trouble with dealing with Angus Fry the number 46 yeah, Shirley on pace Bradley Shepard is on top. 35.6 is the fastest lap and it belongs to the current race leader number 53. On the last 
last lap, he did improve that. First 5-5-6. Five, five, so, uh, Bradley Shepard just getting faster. And Angus Fry unable to keep up with him at the moment. 2.4 seconds slower on that previous lap. No, uh, 0.24 seven, um, seconds, I mean. Not 2.4. That will be very significant. But, um, no, Bradley Shepard at the moment in the lead. Opening up that lead. Little bit at a time. And that is the way to win a race. Bradley Shepard leads the way from Angus Fry to make their way down the Sturmey Strait. The number 12 of uh, Fraser, of Michael Goodburn, sorry, ahead of Fraser to noon in fourth. Fifth is Harry Wilson Brown. So obviously something's happened uh, along the line there somewhere, but Harry Wilson Brown is now fifth. Not quite sure that's happened, but um, is now at the back of the field. And uh, third place, Michael Goodburn, is ahead of Harry Wilson Brown for what might be the first time today. Despite having significantly more pace than him, well not significantly, but more pace than him in both the first and second heats. Now is in third place and his highest position of the day so far for the number 12, Michael Goodburn. Fastest lap belongs to the race leader, Bradley Shepard. Number 53 holding a 35.54 as his fastest lap time. Angus Fry is holding a 35.68. So, uh, ever so slightly slower, but uh, 1.9 seconds separate the two. And now it is over 2.2 uh, 2 seconds. So, opening up that lead is Bradley Shepard and Angus Fry just maybe has lost his momentum that he was carrying from, uh, from he won. Really had something very special in terms of race pace there, but uh, that spin in heat two. Has that just sucked away either the confidence or maybe some other aspect of the drive or indeed the cart itself? Angus Fry is not as quick as he was in Heat 1, that's for sure, or indeed in Heat 2 before the spin. But Bradley Shepard is looking good for a victory here with 1 minute and 40 seconds left on the clock. Michael Goodburn versus Fraser Tanoon for third, but that's still a battle with over four seconds behind between it. All of the drivers are at least a second apart now, turning less into a race and more of a how much of a good time can I set in order to catch up slightly with the person in front, but there's not enough time for any of the drivers to catch up and overtake a, a member in front. Apart from potentially Wilson Brown and Danoon, they were only a second apart on the previous lap and now the gap is 0.7 of a second so whether Wilson Brown will be able to catch up with Danoon at the end of the race who knows but uh, interestingly Michael Goodburn caught up to Angus Fry by 0.14 of a second on the previous lap they're far too far apart to uh, consider that Angus Fry is going to lose second place to uh, Goodburn but certainly Fry disappointed that he hasn't caught up more with Shepard now Shepard has managed to escape and uh, indeed that now Goodburn is in fact the faster of the two of them. And I said that there wouldn't be any uh, moves really apart from Wilson Brown and Danoon and it's looking like that move could be bursting into fruition now as Wilson Brown is on the back of Danoon and not very uh, far behind at all. It could be has, uh, well he does have more experience with overtaking so he should be able to overtake to noon at the earliest opportunity he switches to the inside of Billy's but now they touch and the Danoon's cart goes up in the air but lands luckily back on all four wheels manages to get going again potentially does look to get going but uh, I was a bit cheeky from Wilson Brown went up the inside and uh, well simply Danoon stuck his ground and uh, Ended up in contact with the pair. Well, some round does go through, but I imagine that that pass could have consequences, whether for Wilson Brown or Danoon, who knows, but uh, we will see. It does mean that Wilson Brown provisionally is promoted up to fourth place. 
but he's the final lap now, and it's Bradley Shepard who leads the way in on 53. Ahead of Angus Fry. The gap between them over 4.9 seconds. It will be over 5 seconds as they go across the line, as uh, Bradley Shepard has been opening up that gap. And in fact, on the last lap, he opened up his uh, margin by 9.92 of a second. So, really, really was uh, significantly faster than Angus Fry in the latter stages of that race. Angus Fry does take second, but uh, only 2.3 seconds ahead of Michael Goodburn, who caught up by half a second to Fry. So, something towards the end of the race, Fry really running out of uh, of sheer race pace there. But um, Harry Wilson Brown takes a provisional fourth after a questionable incident between Wilson Brown and Danu, that's for sure. Michael Goodburn does take the highest place novice, though, in third. Angus Fry second, and Bradley Shepard takes the win in what is the final heat of the day. The finals will be coming up shortly, and we'll be starting with the Honda Cadets. But uh, before then, I hope you all have a good lunch break. I'm sure we're going to be in for a very exciting uh, few finals later on. We start with the Honda Cadets straight after lunch. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone and welcome back. We have the finals back in action and it is the Hondas and Iamis who will get us going for the first of the finals of the day. It's Theo Mikutis, Mikuris who's on a uh, pole position, sorry, uh, Ollie Tyler alongside Sonny Smith and Ethan Leader on row two. It's going to be a four-way battle and it could involve many more as they make their way down to Billy's Blind for the first time starting off the finals and the Honda and Iami final for round six here at Clay Pigeon Car Club 2016 is underway. So instantly we have a battle and we have seen a battle throughout the day. Ollie Tyler and Theo Mercurius. There's no doubt about it. Those two have been uh, the, the top two drivers of the day. Ethan Leader has been close. He's currently third place behind the two but uh, hasn't quite reached the levels of the, the top two currently have. Mercurius in the lead at the moment in the number 74 cart he'll be looking to try and take three out of the four wins of the day which would be a fantastic achievement there's a cart going backwards yellow flag cart backwards into the tires and uh, well i'm not sure it did actually make contact with the tires but certainly went back and uh, has now managed to get going again fortunately for him managed to rejoin the race but uh, that's unfortunately involved in the incident that's a number number 28 that was involved in that incident then uh, going backwards, but has managed to rejoin the race again. That's Jed Murphy, was up in sixth place after a promising start, gaining two positions uh, from the start of the race, but now uh, back at the uh, rear of the field due to that incident. <clears throat> but it looks like Mercurius has uh, somewhat escaped the, uh, the rest of the field, or certainly a small gap has uh, happened between himself and Ollie Tyler, the C plated. Ollie Tyler and then Ethan Leader number 27 has now a contact warning and uh, it's got to be careful for the rest of the race that he doesn't incur any more penalties number 27 who is uh, in third place behind Ollie Tyler and the number 95 Sonny Smith haven't seen so much from Sonny Smith today which uh, maybe you would expect uh, from such a talented youngster as we have seen over the last couple months Edward Leader is in fifth place having been overtaken by Smith and uh, they are the top five. Also, one to watch sixth place Charlie Vaughan. We know he's quick as well, but uh, there we go. The current top six. And we have Mercurius in the lead of the race, just about ahead of Ollie Tyler, but not by much. Contact warning for the number 42 now. It's Ewan Charman sitting in eighth position at the moment, just ahead of Harry James and Luke Rendell, who round out the top ten. Liz Mercurius, who leads the way. Ollie Tyler in second position. Ethan Leader in third place, Sonny Smith fourth, Edward Leader fifth, sixth, Charlie Vaughan. And I spoke about this being a battle between four, but really a battle between six, you could easily say. The top six are divided into three separate pairs, and uh, the top two, Mercurius, Tyler, Ethan Leader has a struggle to try and keep the number 95, Sonny Smith at bay. For how long can he do that of this 13 minute final? A lot of fitness comes into play with this as well, especially in the hot conditions. And uh, you've got to be very fit, even at the age that these cadets are from a younger age of seven or eight years old. Got to be certainly in good shape to be able to run on 13 minutes in uh, low powered cart like this certainly requires some fitness levels and I wonder if towards the end of the race we'll start to see a few more mistakes creeping in as the drivers will their cart across the line we shall see but you get a feeling you won't get that from these top few drivers who have been so good throughout the day Mercurius is no exception in the lead of the race ahead of Tyler has made their way into the top end and down the pit straight once more. Here they come then, the top two. It is Ollie Tyler right behind the leader. Puris, who is uh, respectively ahead of uh, then the next pair, which is Sonny Smith and Ethan Leader. Meanwhile, Sonny Smith has managed to get past the leader, so Smith up into third place now. Can Sonny Smith do anything about the leading pair? Ollie Tyler, whether he's deliberately not attacking and is biding his time, who knows, but uh, there is a black and white flag out there, so that's a contact warning for Ollie Tyler. 
Got to be careful not to uh, bump and bash too much the race leader, Theo McCarris. Tyler has a little look up the inside going towards Billy's blind but doesn't commit to the move and don't commit fully to a move. You're not going to get it done. It wasn't a fully, uh, fully attempted pass though by Ollie Tyler. He just wants to eye up the options you suspect. Koris is currently in the lead of the race, but Ollie Tyler really wants that lead, and you suspect that he'll pounce on any opportunity he gets given should Makaris make any kind of mistake. Koris, though, he leads Ollie Tyler as they make their way down to complete their eighth lap. Number 95, Sonny Smith, still leads Ethan Leader as Charlie Vaughan in fifth position is ahead of Edward Leader now. Both the leaders dropping a position over the uh, a position each over the last few laps Sonny Smith though having got past Ethan Leader really hasn't escaped from him Ethan Leader is still very much in with the chance of taking third place despite being in fourth and having fallen behind Sonny Smith Smith has not caught up too much to the leading pair in fact Ethan Leader and Charlie Vaughan well they set identical lap times but then Tyler and Smith have both opened up their retrospective times between their counterparts behind and uh, the number 74 of McElrys is ahead of Ollie Tyler and then that gap which is being opened up as I've, uh, as I've just explained Tyler back to Sonny Smith Ethan Leader is then right behind Smith and this is the leading six and there's a significant back uh, group back gap back to seventh place which is Sean Cuss number 69 He's in a 7th position at the moment with Ewan Charman in 8th, Knight Cameron Ross and Jake Adams in 10th place and um, well Cameron Ross the number 24 in 9th position as things stand but has had fairly decent heat uh, at least on one or two occasions today it must be said I wonder if Ollie, what, I, what Ollie Tyler's game plan is right now, what's going through the head of the C-plated Cart, the youngster who's sitting in that cart thinking what can I do with Theo McCorris who is in front of me right now how can I just get past him just edge past and uh, you suspect that should he be able to get past he will just defend for his life to try and go across the line ahead of McCorris see if he can uh, get ahead and then just defend for the final remaining minutes however long it may be but as I've said he hasn't been in ultra attacking mode he hasn't been trying to get past every opportunity making risky unnecessary uh, moves he's just been calm calculated there's yellow flags waving for uh, uh, Marshall who's on the track picking up a bit of debris uh, fortunately no carts are off so that's good number 95 Sonny Smith in third place still defending from Ethan Leader but again Ethan Leader similar game plan to Ollie Tyler it seems not overly attacking content to just stay behind but maybe try and coax the cart in front of them to just make a small mistake which they can pounce upon and make the most of that opportunity Sonny Smith is ahead of Ethan Leader then still the top two split into those uh, two pairs is a mechanical flag for the number 88 meanwhile That's uh, Cameron Crockett the IAMI cadet in a 20th position on track in terms of IAMIs is uh, third place There's only actually three IAMIs uh, on the circuit it's Thomas Brand, uh, Cameron Crockett and Daniel Thorne but Cameron Crockett unfortunately will have to come into the pit so he may have the first retirement of the 22 carts who are out there on the track pretty impressive when you consider nine minutes have now gone just under four minutes to go plus the one extra lap at the end of course there's a black flag for the number 42 it's Ewan Charman I'm being told to slow down one of the carts in the middle of the circuit it looks like red flags are going to come out Sturmy straight there, didn't quite see what happened, but uh, 
I'm going to stop commentating so the marshals can do their business. But red flag, first red flag of the day in the Honda Cadet final.
so it looks like we are resuming with the race then, and uh, away once more, fortunately. Back underway with Theo Makuris in the lead of the race, with Ollie Tyler in second place, Sonny Smith in third, Ethan Leader in fourth, and of course, one of the hindrances for the drivers who were in little pockets of space is that now they have to regain that advantage again. Red flag bunches all the drivers back up close together as they start with the same advantage back to one another. But uh, only one driver out of the running, Ewan Charman. And um, well, it's easy to see why for the number 42. Nonetheless, still going then, and it's McCorris who leads the way ahead of Sonny Smith. And there's a contact warning meanwhile for Ethan Leader, the number 27, who's got to be careful now in uh, currently position, Ethan Leader in the fourth position. Curris still leading the way though and uh, hasn't lost the lead at all for the entirety of this race so far. Up into third by the way, Ethan Leader. Not the best restart for Ollie Tyler. C-plated Ollie Tyler having uh, got away from the restart of the red flag has not had the happiest of times. It is now down into fourth place. Back to stay ahead of Charlie Vaughan, but uh, also trying to get back ahead of Ethan Leader again. As uh, Sonny Smith, meanwhile, finds himself possibly the biggest winner in second position, but also counting his lucky stars will be the race leader himself, Theo McCoolis, who, uh, well, now has a significant advantage. Not completely dominant, but over a second to play with now, so that's uh, good for him. There's a contact warning for Cameron Ross, number 24 who's in ninth position, uh, has got to be careful now. A few contact warnings being dished out in the Honda Cadet class, and that's another one. But um, fortunately, looks like the rest of the drivers are okay. And there's a, uh, as I say, there's another contact warning uh, now. The number 27 this time, Ethan Leader gets one. And uh, he's very far up the field, as we know fourth position. Yellow flags are out for one of the drivers who's off in the tyre wall of Billy's. Seems to be okay though. Out of the cart straight away and uh, seems pretty deject with the marshals getting ready to pick the cart up and put it over the wall though. But the yellow flag's waving because the marshals out on the circuit. So the coolest leads. Second position is Sonny Smith. Ethan Leader is in third, fourth. Ollie Tyler, fifth. Charlie Vaughan, Sean Cuss is sixth, seventh. Cameron Ross. Edward Leader is in eighth place with Jake Adams and Luke Rendell rounding out the top ten. And uh, that's a black flag now for the number 27. That's Ethan Leader. And uh, so Ethan Leader from third place and there's a yellow flag and that's a driver out of the cart. And uh, it's going to be another red flag. Four carts involved in that incident. Another driver falling out of the cart there. So it's going to be second red flag of this race.
So the Mini Max final will get underway shortly then. The Honda Cadet final has finished. That second red flag finished the race. There was only about 25 seconds left on the clock when the second red flag went. So the provisional result will be a win for Theo McCarris. But we are now underway with the Mini Max class. And it is Oakley Pryor who in the E-plated cars is alongside Tom Adams on the front row. And you'd imagine it would be one of those front two who will be the leading man in this race and potentially take the checkered flag at the end of it. Very early days, of course, going on sheer pace and form throughout the day. You'd imagine it would be one of the pair. Harrison Collings, always around about the top few cards, and is in third place. Tin and Rourke started in fourth. James Crossley, Michael Salmon, Harvey Thornley, and Joseph Hockwood make up the rest of the field. But it is Pryor who takes an early lead from pole position. Tom Adams, second place with Harrison Collings in third. The only changes in order, fourth place Michael Salmon and Tiernan Rourke losing two positions down into sixth now. James Crossley not changing any positions, still remaining in fifth in between the two who have switched. But uh, Oakley Pryor and Tom Adams as the top two. Pryor though currently leading the way then with the E-plated cart doing the business and uh, in second place Tom Adams number 57 been the closest competitor to Pryor throughout the day and uh, thus it is proved once again in the final the number 96 of Collings once again in the top three and hovering about the uh, the drivers who are right at the front of the field but just not quite there in terms of pace maybe hasn't quite got the experience that the top two have prior and adams both very very experienced drivers in terms of the class casting itself and indeed clay pigeon so uh, collings in third place and you'd find it unlikely going on the form that we've seen today that he'll maybe make it further than third place but also his nearest rival is tin and rourke and rourke hasn't been most competitive driver throughout the day either he's uh, been there or thereabouts again in the top few which is not quite as quick as the top two who have been very very good today Oakley Pryor and Tom Adams supplying the top positions in every race and um, so it is proved Oakley Pryor leading the way once more as they make their way down the pit straight for what is the sixth time now nine minutes and 18 seconds left on the clock. Ridiculous amount of time and um, truly very, very fortunate for the racers to get this much track time realistically. Um, very few other circuits would have this much track time in a day. That's for sure. 13 minute finals certainly stretches your fitness. Harrison Collins in third position in a bit of no man's land at the moment see if he can actually catch up with the leading two on the previous lap he uh, sets a 37.07 uh, is a personal best and in fact all three of the top three set their personal best 37.07 for Harrison Collins which is ever so slightly slower than the 36.63 set by Oakley Pryor but the fastest lap goes to second placed 
Tom Adams, 36.61. So maybe he can catch up with the E-plated Oakley Fryer. Maybe he can overtake, take the race win. It's certainly, you'd imagine, is going to be between the top two. But it's Pryor versus Adams as they make their way down the pit straight once more. Adams catching up and he seems to have that toe going down the pit straight. Certainly seems to have more speed, whether he just had a better exit out of the top end that time. Uh, who knows, but uh, certainly right up behind Oakley Pryor went towards the top of the straight. It looked like there was a fair distance between them. So went over the line, just 0.18 seconds separating the two. Adams and Pryor still could be a decent battle yet. Pryor though, a 36.65 on that previous lap, compared to a 36.7 from Tom Adams. So Pryor did ever slightly open up the gap, but it seems that Adams is back on the case now and does set a personal best. All of the drivers on the previous lap set a personal best uh, for each of themselves. So getting quicker out there and nine laps gone each of the drivers determined to improve on their position but uh, apart from the leading pair the most of the field is pretty much spread out now apart from a bit later on where you start with number 11 Harvey Thornley and then uh, Joseph Hockwood and jo James Crossley are battled in there as well but Hockwood of course the sole junior TKM so uh, he is not in the same class as the Minimax therefore is not competing for the same points as them lead from Tom Adams nothing to separate the pair 0 0.8 not 8 of a second sorry separating the pair as it went over the line at that time by see how that changes when they come over the line now as they go into the, the top end heading down the pit straight once more the leading duo make their way across the start finish line and who has the advantage this time Looks like it is still Oakley Pryor as he opens up that gap by 0.03 of a second. Gap between them just over a tenth as they went over the line. So Tom Adams loses a bit of time on that last lap, but it seems to go back and forth. Lose a bit of time, gain a bit of time, lose a bit of time. And Tom Adams will have to make sure he keeps gaining the time and then eventually can overtake Pryor if he really, really wants to win this race. I'm sure he does. Uh, meanwhile, Crossley getting past Joseph Hockwood, that is uh, for 7th place on the track of course, still in completely different classes, so Hockwood at the back of the field in the sole junior TKM. Five minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock and it's Oakley Fryer who leads away with the f not the fastest lap now. I thought he had the fastest lap for a second, but he's in fact one hundredth of a second slower than uh, Tom Adams' fastest lap. A 36.5 dead uh, set by Tom Adams. So completely very, very uh, consistent there between the two drivers. Very close indeed. And as close as you can get pretty much. Tom Adams just a tiny bit quicker than prior as things stand. But Pryor has the grid position, and that is what's truly counting at the moment, especially when it comes to the end of the race. The championship points that will be up for offer, and indeed the trophy that itself will be awarded to the winner. There will also be a, a trophy for second place, though, I believe, with uh, the amount of cards that are out in this field. But um, regardless, looks like we have a really close battle on our hands here. Tom Adams is still on the back. Hopefully prior, but not by a lot as they make their way into the S's and onto the Sturmy Straight once more with 4 minutes and 10 seconds to go now. Into the top end they go. And it's Oakley Pryor still ahead of Tom Adams. Is Tom Adams going to make an attacking manoeuvre? He is indeed. He's going to go up the inside and into Billy's blind. Tom Adams does now hold the race lead, but Oakley Pryor is going to try and come back, and he does indeed do that. So out of the S's, Adams just couldn't quite hold on, couldn't quite get back to cover the inside fast enough. Pryor dies back up the inside and regains the place. So despite losing out, Pryor still holds race position of the lead. 
And uh, Tom Adams, he wasn't looking really attacking up until that point and then made that decision. Tried to go with it, but just couldn't quite follow through. This time he doesn't dive up the inside and let's try to hold the lead for yet another lap. But three minutes to go, still a lot of time, but the clock is ticking for Tom Adams. And if he wants to bring that 57 home in front of everyone else, he's going to have to really put a shift in in order to get past Oakley Pryor, the E-plated cart. He's a very capable driver, as we know, as he made their way down hit straight once more. Will he attack once again going into Billy? Seems to be his preferred spot, Tom Adams. I've made a couple passes there throughout the day. It's the hairpin now making their way onto the horseshoe, but uh, now the back of the field still relatively normal proceedings. Crossley ahead of Hockwood. Sixth, seventh, and eighth is Harvey uh, Thornley. Prior followed by Adams and still the gap 0.13 but Prior opened up by 0.04 uh, on that previous lap so Prior's gap back to Adams slightly more than it was the lap before although they are as we can see visibly very very close together Looks like the gap has opened up somewhat now though, as they go across the line this time. 0.27 seconds opened up by the race leader. Tom Adams losing a bit of ground there as they made their way into the S's and onto the stummy straight once more. Maybe Tom Adams will wonder slightly what happened that last lap, but prior certainly holds the advantage that time. 0.4 seconds the gap, and that's too much to even make a move by Tom Adams now, but one minute to go. And that means there's still time for one or certainly two or three more laps I'd imagine there will be another lap after this one yet so this should be the third from final lap for the Mini Max and also the Lone Junior TKM final of this month Oakley Pryor in the lead of the race ahead of Tom Adams but 0.2 seconds at last last lap so Tom Adams catching up once again when he loses time he is the faster driver at the moment he just can't quite get past uh, Oakley Pryor Pryor just holding the advantage and Adams find it incredibly difficult to get past although the clock now has hit zero so next lap coming up will be the final lap for the drivers out here in this class today. Here we go then into the top end for the, the penultimate stretch down the pit straight. You see the last lap board and Tom Adams knows he hasn't got a lot of time left to try and overtake Oakley Pryor but Pryor has had this one in control from almost start to finish. He hasn't got much further to go for he will lead Adams across the line. Harrison Collins, meanwhile, in third place. Again, having a pretty lonely race. He's miles away from the top two, but not close enough to fourth to be troubled. Looks like coming across the line, it will be Pryor just about. Adams is close, and he'll try and go neck and neck across the line, but he won't be able to do it. And Pryor takes the chequered flag. The first actual non-debatable finish although there no I say that'll probably be about five penalties or something but uh, that's no provisional result there that should be a win for Oakley Pryor Tom Adams takes second position 0.06 seconds separated the pairs he went across the line but uh, Tom Adams couldn't quite do anything about the e-plated eventual victor Harrison Collings takes third fourth Tin and Rourke Michael Salmon's fifth sixth James Crossley, 
and Joseph Hockwood and Harrison uh, Harvey Thornley, sorry, across the line to round out the rest of the field. But Pryor just about pipping uh, Tom Adams to the line in the first actual finish of any of the finals so far today. Senior Max will be underway after this formation lap then and it's Oliver Holden on pole. He's alongside Gary Ford on the front row. Ryan Hodge is on row two alongside Thomas Martin. Emilia Vincent in fifth place on the grid alongside Harriet Stiles. Lee Hodge is alongside Andy Ward for row four and rounding out the grid Tyler Trotter and Harry Barker as we prepare for the Senior Max final. 13 minutes of the Senior Max to enjoy as they make their way down, seemingly quiet and sensible, down towards the acceleration line where the fun begins, and now we do have 30 minutes of the Senior Max to look forward to, and we get underway with the race then into the Yeses and onto the Sturmy Straight, and it's the number 23 of Oliver Holden, who from pole has had a very good getaway, and uh, could he escape from the rest of the field and simply cruise to victory? Well, we will see in just a few minutes time realistically whether Oliver Holden has that uh, advantage which he'll so want but um, Oliver Holden in the lead of the race then already has a pretty sustainable gap back to uh, second place number 25 Ryan Hodge uh, the novice and of course involved with Clay Pigeon certainly not a newbie to the sport Ahead of Gary Ford, Thomas Martin in fourth. Fifth place is Amelia Vincent with sixth place Harry Styles. Uh, Lee Hodge is in seventh place. Eighth, Harry Barker. Ninth, Andy Ward and Tyler Trotter in tenth position. A good start by Harry Barker as well, gaining two positions up into eighth from the start of the race. But at the moment, Oliver Holden is the race leader and is opening up his gap as well each lap 0.49 seconds already opened up on that previous lap so opening up by half a second in these early stages means that he's going to have an absolutely huge margin of victory should things carry on the way they are although of course still a huge amount of time left till the end of this one but Ryan Hodge in second place the number 25 he'll be wondering what's the difficulty with this karting lark Gary Ford in the number 54, meanwhile, is uh, in third place. And that, in fact, has been overtaken by Thomas Martin. So, Thomas Martin up into third place. He's also another strong competitor, as we know. Oliver Holden maybe pips into the post in terms of your pace that well especially they, they've had today but Oliver Holden versus Ryan Hodge versus Thomas Martin at the moment it's looking Oliver Holden all the way but Hodge versus Martin very much less certain Martin in third position will he be trying to get past number 25 of uh, Ryan Hodge sooner rather than later or wait till the end of the race to strike so that Hodge can't reply well, it looks like he's already going in an attacking frame of mind with that little glimpse of the inside going into the hairpin, but uh, we'll have to see if more of that occurs again. But Thomas Martin at the moment in third place behind the novice 25, seeing exactly what he can do to get past up into second place, see if he can catch up with the race leader who is getting away, escaping little by little every lap, 0.4 seconds he uh, opened up his lead by on that previous lap, 2.68 seconds already the leader's advantage after just five laps gone. 
Next race, meanwhile, will be the RAF Premier Final. That's bound to be one to look forward to. 16 carts in a strong grid and a strong racing uh, class as well, as we've seen some really good racing so far today. Anyone could win it, realistically, from the top. Maybe eight drivers. They're all pretty quick indeed. Uh, so that'll be one to look forward to. That'll be followed by the 177 Masters. Senior TKM and Junior Max will round out the day in race number 28. But uh, still got there for a good few races left in this day. And uh, it's coming up to five to four now. Daylight shouldn't be an issue in these summer months where the... Uh, Days are, well, they are slowly getting shorter now, but should no doubt be fine. Sure. Number 23 of Oliver Holden, though, in the lead and uh, having absolutely no troubles of zone, probably just enjoying the sun out here in uh, the August meeting here at Clay. <coughs> <coughs> And a spinner there, little incident there with the number 74 is that, Amelia Vincent, and uh, is indeed, and has been touched and is now dragging that cart back towards the uh, pit lane, or will she manage to continue going? Yellow flags are out, but after giving the cart a little twitch, a little bit of time, looks like She's off again, but uh, it's a contact warning for Harriet Styles for that incident. So, uh, yeah, that was a controversial one. Amelia Vincent could have been put out of the running, but uh, is instead 14.3 seconds behind Tyler Trotter. So, that's um, rejoined at the back of the grid, at least, if nothing else. Oliver Holden has an advantage of over four seconds now, so not totally dominating and... Uh, pulling away by seconds per lap, but certainly has absolutely no troubles and opens up by 1.36 seconds on that previous lap, so not having any issues at all with the pace of Ryan Hodge, who's in second place, the closest competitor to the race leader. Hodge, who is slightly battling with Thomas Martin. Martin is behind, but not immediately behind. And Martin's still got a little bit of actual catching up to do before he can overtake, despite it being a good few laps. Thomas Martin has been in third place now. Has made their way down to the hairpin, that battle for second, and exit the small dip that there is at the end of the hairpin into the sweeping left hand horseshoe. And they make their way into Buttons, into the top bend now, and on to. The pit straight once more. The number 25 of Ryan Hodge doing a good job of his novice status. No doubt about that. Keeping Thomas Martin at bay is no easy task. Let alone for someone who hasn't been racing for very long. Crosses the line to uh, set his 12th lap time as there's a contact warning for the number 14, Harry Barker. Now, both Barker and Harriet Stars, who are battling for fourth place, have got a contact warning under their belt. Got to be careful to uh, not be involved in too many more incidences before uh, the end of this race. of Andy Ward, a bit of a squabble with Lee Hodge there, brother of Ryan Hodge. Further down the field though, 8th position, Ryan Hodge battling of course in 2nd place with Thomas Martin. That battle still raging on, but uh, it seems that Thomas Martin simply isn't getting any closer to passing Ryan Hodge. The distance has maintained very steady over the last few laps. And uh, Ari Barker is catching up with Thomas Martin, though with just under five minutes to go and a 3.7 second advantage. 
Harry Barkley's going to have to be pretty nippy if he wants to catch up to Thomas Martin and overtake, which could even carve an opening to uh, get past Ryan Hodge as well, but I personally can't see that happening. He simply isn't getting gaining enough time to catch up with Thomas Martin, though. And all that last lap, 0.3 seconds caught up again. Keeps going at this rate. He'll uh, be close to uh, the rear bumper of Thomas Martin by the end of the race, if not immediately on it. Harriet Stiles still behind Harry Barker, but uh, not by a lot, but certainly not enough for Barker to worry about at this stage. Andy Ward behind Harriet Stiles by a relatively um, bigger margin, 1.7 seconds this time. Gary Ford is in 7th place, Lee Hodge 8th, 9th is Tyler Trotter, Mimi Vincent still of course 10th and last after that uh, incident with Harriet Stiles a few laps ago, over 11 seconds behind Tyler Trotter in 9th. Although, Amelia Vincent is closing in rapidly, half a second closed in uh, to Tyler Trotter on that previous lap, though with the time that is left, even half a second every lap won't end uh, any other position than 10. James Martin has meanwhile managed to get past Ryan Hodge, so it's been a long time coming, and uh, certainly was working progress for a huge number of laps, but eventually Thomas Martin has managed to get past Ryan Hodge, and Hodge now down into third place for what is almost the first time in the race. A good qualifying position by Hodge, and um, now falls down into third behind Thomas Martin once more. He didn't have the best of starts, but has now got back into his arguably rightful position of second place, going on pace anyway. That is the, uh, the position that makes sense for Thomas Martin to be in. Oliver Holden holds the fastest lap as the race leader, 35-1-5, and is significantly quicker than anyone else on the field. 6.74 second advantage over second place, Thomas Martin. Two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Second place, Thomas Martin still squabbling with Ryan Hodge a little bit, though Hodge doesn't seem to be able to reply to Thomas Martin. Martin is ever so slightly just stretching that gap out each lap that time. He did so by, well, actually that time Ryan Hodge did actually close in, that was quite funny. But um, it looks like it's going to be a second place for Thomas Martin regardless, even though Hodge is slightly closing in. laps completed now then for the current race leader Oliver Holden who is having almost no troubles at all I imagine the only trouble he'll be having at this stage is possibly his arms aching a little bit and feeling rather hot and sweaty under a uh, driving suit and uh, the, that helmet because it's a pretty hot day out there pretty toasty now has been throughout the day, and uh, Oliver Holden just has to take it to the finish line to take the win. Nothing dramatic, nothing really eventful from now to the end of the race. Just take this one home. He's already set his fastest lap on lap 6, 35.15. Hasn't gone fast since then, even though he's done now 21 laps and just has to take it to the finish line. Will be a very good result for the number 23 ahead of. 69 of Thomas Martin, who has managed to stay ahead of Ryan Hodge, despite Hodge actually closing in ever so slightly flat. Race leader Holden goes across the line with three seconds to spare, so means that this will be the penultimate lap now and not the last lap. Oliver Holden, I would have been cursing my luck then, thinking, it's unlucky that uh, 
have to go around an extra two times rather than one, but regardless, he gets a bit more track time. And uh, this race will be one of 24 laps, which sounds ridiculous when you consider a few years ago, 16 laps was considered uh, very, very long finals. But uh, the alpha timing system and the times instead of the laps now means that we do get longer races. And I think that's uh, good for each of the drivers that come to play, knowing you're going to get some guaranteed really good track time, over 50 laps a day. Not bad at all. This is the last lap now though. And number 23 of Oliver Holden has just got a couple corners to go before he wins round six. And the final of the Senior Max this month. And the number 23 of Oliver Holden takes the checkered flag. An impressive win. And a very comfortable one. Comes across the line ahead of Thomas Martin and Ryan Hodge. Who uh, respectively finish 7.93 and 8.64 seconds behind the race winner. Harry Barker comes fourth with fifth place Harriet Stiles. Sixth is Andy Ward and Lee Hodge seventh. Eighth Tyler Trotter, Gary Ford will come across the line now to finish in ninth.
Here we are then, ready to go for the RAF Premier Final. And I personally think this is going to be a pretty entertaining race. We've got many drivers out there who could go ahead and win it. And one of them, of course, being Matthew Hildred on pole position. Alongside him, Callum Drew. Oliver Wayne is on row two with Liam Long. Troy Cole, Matthew Daniel, Gerald Owen and Simon Hill to make out the top eight. And away we go with the RAF Premier. And down towards Billy's blind and into the S's for the first time. One of the cars going very slowly uh, towards the back of the pack there. And uh, seems to be struggling very early on. That's number 52. Uh, that's Matthew Daniel. Oh, that's a shame considering that uh, he was one of the fast drivers as well. And he three where we had that epic six-way battle for the lead. And um, Matthew Daniel seems to be out of the running there. So that is a pity. Uh, it seems to be... Well, actually, won't be continuing with the race, just warming the tyres back up and uh, won't be back underway again. So, um, Matthew Daniel looks like he will be getting going again. Despite having that uh, early issue there. So, Callum Drew leads the race with uh, Matthew Hildred in uh, second position, Drew obviously having that better start than Drew actually has been in blistering form since the last couple of heats. Didn't have the best first heat, but uh, Cameron Drew, Callum Drew, sorry, has had a truly brilliant uh, last few heats. And uh, it seems that Callum Drew is going to continue the form that he's been having of late by being in the lead, well currently, getting past pole sitter Matthew Hildred and Oliver Waned as well who is uh, currently up into second place now, having get past Hildred. That's uh, Liam Long in fourth, another driver to watch, and Troy Cole is quick as well, Gerald Owen, and Summer Hilton. We've all seen glimpses of these guys throughout the day, and uh, really could still be down to any one of them to win it. So at the moment, it's looking good for the number 24, Callum Drew. And uh, he leads the way into the S's for the fourth time. Oliver Wayne is in second position, the number one. Matthew Hildred is in third and fourth place. Liam Long in the number 60 cart. Unusual number to see on a cart for some reason. I just don't really remember seeing a number 60 before. And uh, number 28 of Troy Cole is in fifth place. Of course, the other one of that uh, group of six, which we have seen over uh, certainly in Heat 3, where there was that six way battle. Matthew Daniel is the only one missing from that because he is in 16th place due to that early issue that he had uh, on well, just the first lap, just coming into the S's on the first lap. But uh, hopefully he'll be able to get back in uh, the running once more. Through then across the line ahead of Oliver Wayne by 1.05 of a second. Opening up that margin as well by 0.14 of a second from uh, their previous lap. Liam Long uh, overtaking Matthew Hildred, and Hildred in fact hasn't had the best race so far. He may have started on pole, but he struggled for pace so far today um, in this particular final, not throughout the race. Don't struggle for pace throughout the day if you uh, get pole position, that's for sure. But uh, in this race, Hildred not having the uh, optimum time with his cart. He's down to fourth place now under a bit of pressure from Troy Cole. Got to be careful not to lose fourth position to the number 28, who will be freezing down his neck. No problem at all going by the, uh, the results so far of this race, but. Um, We've got the leader of Callum Drew ahead of Oliver Waynes. And then there's a pretty significant gap, actually. It's um, 1.6 seconds back to Liam Long. Matthew Hildred and Troy Cole aren't too far behind Long. Uh, Long sitting in third. Away. More flying and into the Eppies are the third place gang. The battle for third place at least. Liam Long, followed by Hildreth and Troy Cole. And 
eight minutes and well just under a half remaining eight minutes and 25 seconds as drivers make their way but at the moment it's looking very good for Callum Drew in the number 24 as his cart goes hurtling down the pit straight and opens up the margin between himself and second place Oliver Wayne once more this time by 0.16 of a second so opening up between himself and second place always what you want to do as a race leader and uh, that's a one way recipe to get a further gap and to open up that lead which will result in of course more likelihood of actually winning the race which even with a lot of time left to go Callum Drew I'm sure will be focusing on at this stage Personal best being set by the drivers there, Matthew Hildred and Troy Cole setting personal best of 35.54 and 35.87 respectively. Meaning that Troy Cole is fairly significantly slower than Hildred actually, 0.33 of a second uh, slower on our previous lap and is now three quarters of a second behind the pole sitter. That is opening up between the uh, drivers. And, uh, well, Hildred is now closer to Liam Long. And will he be able to reclaim a position which he's lost? He'll be able to find himself back onto the podium. We shall see. But uh, how much is time is left? Six minutes and 50 seconds. So still an awful lot of time. And uh, we mustn't just make assumptions, but Callum Drew... 1.7 seconds is advantage now back to Oliver Waynes and that's looking pretty good for the race leader Waynes doing as much as he can and he's escaping Liam Long and the gap between Liam Long and uh, Oliver Waynes is over 2.2 seconds so it's quick but he's just not quite as quick as the current race leader Meanwhile, the battle for 7th or, well, 6th place rages pretty strongly. Gerald Owen leading Simon Hilton and Lee Morn, Ben Scott, Sam Froggart, Robert Small all in the running. Robert Small a little bit further back, actually, 1.2 seconds behind. But uh, certainly Ben Scott, Morn, Hilton and Owen fighting for that 6th place. Starting with the number 27, who's currently occupying that position, making their way down the uh, the pit straight now. And they're far from guaranteed, isn't it? Simon Hilton takes sixth place from Jolto on that previous lap as uh, they make their way into the S's and onto the stummy straight once more. It is Simon Hilton up into sixth now. Gerald Owen holding seventh, eighth is Lee Mourns with Ben Scott in ninth. And that's still the battle for sixth as things stand. And it looks like there could be a change here. The number 77 of Ben Scott trying to get past Lee Mourned. Looks like he might have got that move done. But uh, one that's further up the field. Matthew Hildred versus Liam Long. And uh, Hildred is catching up with Long now. So that is a battle for what could potentially be a change for the final podium spot or third. 0.03 of a second Hildred closed in by. So not very much at all. Uh, there is a cart off now side of the Sturmy straight looks like he might be out of the running and that is unfortunate for that driver uh, Liam Long and Matthew Hildred are ineffective in fact it might be Troy Cole number 28 is indeed Troy Cole so out of the running his car to the side of Sturmy Stray, and that must be disappointing for any driver, especially with uh, with Cole, who was in a pretty decent position as well. Um, fifth place, wasn't he? So unlucky for the number 28 there. 
means two drivers out of the running. Owen Lang is the no is the other one. Number 66 went into the pit after seven laps and hasn't returned, so presumably out of the running. Highest place novice meanwhile is Ben Scott, number 77. Um, the novice of which is in seventh place, fitting his number accordingly. I think for a 35.94, which is ever so slightly quicker than uh, Simon Hilton actually, who's in fifth position. So Ben Scott, uh, obviously a quick novice out there today, and is significantly higher placed than his novice counterparts Robert Small and Sean Griffin, who are in tenth and eleventh respectively. Keeps opening up his race lead though. Now the margin exactly, well, it was exactly three seconds. Now it's 3.29 of a second ahead of Oliver Wayne. So that's a very comfortable margin to work with. Opening up by 0.29 of a second. And uh, he does that every lap, which he's been doing more or less consistently, just quicker than everyone else on the circuit, more or less. Then um, he's going to be. Pretty dominant victor in the end, should he come across the line in that position with uh, not so much time left on the clock now, just 1 minute 40. It's looking more and more certain that Callum Drew will be the man who wants line in first place. Oliver Wayne is in second with third, Matthew Hildred, and Liam Long is in fourth place. Hildred ahead of Long, he managed to get past the number 16, but uh, still far from decided for that battle as uh, they are still pretty close to one another. Simon Hilton is in fifth place and he's followed by Gerald Owen and that gap still is maintaining about the same as it has been over the last few laps in the second seven. Ben Scott is in seventh place, Lee Maud in eighth, ninth, Sam Froggart and Robert Small in tenth. But uh, I mean, realistically, there aren't too many really ferocious battles out on the circuit. Maybe the closest Gerald Owen and Ben Scott battle for sixth place. Ben Scott, if he can gain another position, that'd be a very, very good fight from a novice, wouldn't it? From uh, starting every single heat at the back of the field to finishing sixth, that really would be a, uh, a remarkable drive by Ben Scott, the number 77. So not loads of time left, not much time left at all. 11 seconds are remaining on the clock. And uh, we'll see how much time remains when they cross the line. It should be just about zero. It is indeed so. Last lap. And Callum Drew has got half a mile or not one five of a kilometre to go before he will be the winner of the round six. Uh, RAF Premier meeting here at Clay Beach and Car Club 2016. Drew leading from Wayne and that gap has just kept getting bigger and bigger and it's been a very successful, comfortable and talented win from Callum Drew. RAF's finest driver of the hour. Oliver Wayne finishes in second place. Third, Matthew Hildred with Liam Long in fourth. Hildred, despite losing a few positions, did manage to regain third at least and will finish on the final spot on the podium. Simon Hilton takes fifth, sixth, Gerald Owen, Ben Scott, seventh and eighth, Lee Moore, ninth, Sam Froggart, Robert Small, tenth, and eleventh place, Stephen Boffey. Sean Griffin takes twelfth in the final of the novices. Uh, Matthew Daniel, thirteenth position. And uh, looks like that is the last of the drivers, Isabel Storer, has retired after 17 laps, so uh, indeed the uh, 13 finishes of the 16 grid 
and the race is concluded with Callum Drew the winner over Oliver Wayne. The gap between them 4.29 seconds in the end. One seven seven and the one seven seven masters are out on track and getting ready for their final. Julian Howell will take pole position ahead of Daniel Martin, having gained one point more over the heat. Joe Wormsley in the number thirty three will start on row two alongside Daniel Milner with Gary Cox and Dean Mann in behind. Row four consists of Tim James and Simon Gover with Martin Howell and Sammy Dix on row five. Running out the back of the green, 11th and 12th, Keith Bishop and Rob Prince. But at the front of the row, Julian Howell versus Daniel Martin. It's once again the same battle between the two very talented drivers in the 177s. And let's see how this fascinating affair ends up as they go now from pole position, Julian Howell. And he'll know how essential it is to get a good start and try to keep Daniel Martin behind him as long as he possibly can. into the hairpin and heading their way into the horseshoe for the first time and it is Julian Howell who does still maintain the lead Daniel Martin in second place third Daniel Milner looks like ahead of Joe Wormsley despite uh, Wormsley being ahead on the grid and uh, so there have been almost no changes in position in the first lap which is an unusual thing to say clay pigeon but uh, Gary Cox has gained a position now up into fifth place, having overtaken Dean Mann, uh, who is now demoted down into sixth. Tim James overtaking Simon Gover for seventh. And uh, the battle for first, meanwhile, rages on. So Julian Howell versus Daniel Martin, 19 versus 70. And let's see how the top two will battle it out. And the number 62. Daniel Milner, who's in third place, will he surprisingly be able to compete with the top two, who usually are so dominant in the 177 class, Howell and Daniel Martin. And Daniel Martin switched to the inside now, that would have been a very, very clever move had he managed to pull that off, making it seem like he's going around the outside and then actually switching to the inside at last moment, but... Uh, Already the gap had formed and Julian Howell had closed the door before it was too late for the race leader to defend that one anymore. But uh, the top two are surprisingly not getting away. Milner still right on the back of them. And uh, it goes to show maybe the top two they just aren't as uh, incredibly beyond everyone else's ability but uh, Daniel Martin has been more managed to get past Julian Howell so maybe now Daniel Martin will just effectively disappear having been one of the quickest drivers in 177s for a long long time Daniel Martin he uh, really knows how to make the most out of that cart but Julian Howell is right on him will he try and make that move back he knew he was alongside him on the grid and he knew he needed a good start. He managed to get it. He kept Daniel Martin behind him for a 
a couple of laps. Daniel Martin making his way past, but hasn't completely disappeared into the distance yet. And Julian Howell will just have to try and hold on for as long as he can. Try and get past the number 70 once more. Reclaim the race lead. As uh, Milner, meanwhile, Daniel Milner in third place, looks on to the battle of the front, perhaps hoping for an incident between the pair. But there's a contact warning for Dean Mann, number 27, who's uh, down into seventh place, having been overtaken by Simon Gover on the previous lap. So uh, we want to be cautious now. Gary Cox is in fifth, Joe Wormsley, Daniel Milner in fourth and third. So working up the order, it looks like there's a battle, really, of the top five. Which is surprising considering that uh, usually Julian Howell and Daniel Martin do escape, although Daniel Martin at the moment is doing just that. Seems to just have the legs and he's uh, slowly pulling away from Julian Howell, almost agonisingly from Howell's point of view. But uh, Howell isn't guaranteed a second place, that's for certain. Daniel Milner is right behind him and uh, certainly isn't far away from. Um, being able to threaten Howell for that second position. Number 33 of Joe Wormsley is in fourth place, but a little bit further behind Milner to really think about making a move. And then fifth place, Gary Cox. Again, too far of a margin to consider a realistic pass for fourth position. At the moment though, the closest battle, which is surprising considering the circumstances, Julian Howell versus Daniel Milner and that is a battle for second place. Will Milner be able to overtake Julian Howell and take a surprise second uh, place behind Daniel Martin as Martin looks to just keep getting away and he does keep doing that each lap on lap and the gap on the previous lap exactly one second. The gap this time is 1.43 so you can see how the gap quickly turns into a more significant margin each and every lap as Daniel Martin puts in the times. Fastest lap as well, set two laps ago, 35.75, where no other drivers managed to get below the 36 second mark. Goes to show Daniel Martin really is something else when it comes to the 177 racing. But Julian Howell is having to defend here from Daniel Milner. Milner right on the back of the number 19 as they look to go across the line to complete their ninth lap with seven and a half minutes to go. Daniel Martin leading by 1.83 seconds over that last lap. Let's see what the margin is now as they come across the line. Still Milner pressurising the number 19 of Julian Howell somewhat, but uh, 2.13 seconds is now the advantage between the leader and Howell. And uh, that could prove to be decisive in the end. laps completed and Daniel Martin is on his way to yet another final victory in the Rotax 177 final this time in row 6 of 2016 here at Pigeon Car Club and um, I wonder if there will be any really close competitors for Daniel Martin next year hopefully the Clay Pigeon will experience I think a grid to next season and uh, whether a new competitor will come in who can simply rival Daniel Martin, we shall see, but uh, Julian Howell usually does a very good job of uh, squabbling with Daniel Martin, but uh, 
in the final like today where Daniel Martin gets into the lead it seems that no one can stop the shift pace that he has just manages to eclipse the rest of the field and uh, puts in the lap times to escape the rest of them and Julian Howell can't keep up and if Julian Howell can't keep up then the rest of the field certainly aren't able to with uh, Howell significantly quicker than for the most part the rest of the field but uh, Daniel Martin, uh, Daniel Milner sorry put in a, uh, a pretty good fight over the last few laps to try and fight Julian Howell but uh, Milner actually dropped a position there uh, on the previous lap to Joe Wormsley so had been dropping off the pace of the last couple of laps Joe Wormsley now up into third and uh, number 33 could be on his way to take a final podium place behind Julian Howell and uh, ahead of Daniel Milner where Milner was really looking like he could threaten Julian Howell in second place for a little while there but uh, 4 minutes and 15 seconds to go and it's Daniel Milner ahead of Gary Cox, Simon Gover, Tim James and Martin Howell is behind Samuel Dix having been overtaken on that previous lap Dean Mann also still running, all, car all 10 of the 177 carts still underway and uh, Daniel Martin does lead Julian Howell and Joe Wormsley for the top three as things stand. The uh, top five separated by 5.8 seconds. So Daniel Martin is not totally uh, annihilating the rest of the field, but certainly is not having any troubles with getting away from them. It's going very slowly here. It looks like they could have been towards the front as well. It's the number 27 or 21, is that? 27 of Dean Mann might be. Uh, going particularly slowly though around the S's and um, really not having the best race is Dean Mann. Two minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock then with Daniel Martin in the lead, Julian Howell is in second, Joe Walmsley is in third ahead of Daniel Milner and Milner has been losing time since Walmsley overtook him and Milner really looked like he could have overtaken Howell at one stage but uh, it seems that that opportunity is more or less disappeared now and Milner may be losing incentive, lost his sense of objective and uh, Wormsley overtook Milner, number 62 now finds himself in 4th place and potentially under threat from conceding to Gary Cox who's uh, not that far behind now, 0.16 of a second so let's see as they uh, go across the line once more, Daniel Martin number 70, he's got a uh, huge margin now, he's uh, Probably on his way to yet another victory, one would imagine. But uh, 14 of Gary Cox, not too far behind Daniel Milner. Can that be a potential move in the last few laps here? One and a half minutes to go. And round into the S's goes the battle for fourth. Milner could really be under pressure. Gary Cox is going to try and go the inside, does manage to do so. And it uh, looks like Gary Cox has overtaken Milner, and that is a change in position for fourth. So, will Milner be able to reply? We shall see. Blue flags are out and waving for uh, Marvin Dean Mann to get out of the way of Daniel Martin. But. Uh, Julian Howell, Joe Wormsley, Gary Cox, Daniel Milner out of the order. Just that one difference, of course, with Milner being overtaken by Cox and uh, seemingly at the moment has no reply.
last lap now and uh, some pretty essential changes happening over the last few laps Julian Howell pulling into the pits from second position so all of the drivers are gaining one position each and uh, yeah Julian Howell into the pits so that is a surprise retirement there considering especially considering that there was almost no time left Daniel Martin now takes the check and flag and uh, Joe Wormsley will come across the line to take second position, third. Daniel Milner just about ahead of Gary Cox, having replied and overtaken him once again. Simon Gover uh, will be hoping for fifth uh, place ahead of Tim Jones, which he just about should achieve. Does indeed, and Tim Jones will come across the line now to finish in sixth. Martin Howell seventh, and Dean Mann in eighth. But Julian Howell, a surprise retirement. Just two laps from the end, and uh, means that Daniel Martin takes the win by an even sig more significant margin, 6.84 seconds back to Wormsley, and uh, then Daniel Milner joins Wormsley and Martin on the podium. The senior TKM final about to get underway. They go then, the senior TKM, Luke Barton alongside Will Fox on the front row. And it could be a close one from start to finish this from the senior TKM. carts make their way round to complete their first lap and uh, it is Will Fox who currently holds the lead ahead of Luke Barton, Derek Hunt versus Jonathan Fox and Will Davis at the back but uh, it's still very close the only real noticeable gap is between Barton and Hunt and that's for uh, the gap between second and third place but nonetheless the field's still very very much close together and we haven't seen the the uh, uh, all of the competitors really space out and spread out throughout the course of today. They've all stayed tight and compact. And uh, apart from Barton in the uh, uh, heats one and two, there hasn't been any of them who have really escaped from one another, not properly. Will Fox does lead the way though, and he's been the closest competitor to Luke Barton today. There's been no doubt about that. Both of those competitors, neither of them championship uh, contenders, but both very quick on their day. And should they decide to do the championship, for example, next season, I'd imagine they'll be up there. Will Fox ahead of Luke Barton, though, who is in turn ahead of Jonathan Fox. 
who's somewhat sandwiched in the middle of two pairs. Hunt and Davis in fourth and fifth behind Jonathan Fox as Will Fox is getting under a bit more increasing pressure from Luke Barton. The number 18 is really starting to turn it up now and see if he can get past number 50. Will Fox, who as of yet isn't driving defensively, but um, he may start doing so if Luke Barton is aggressive with his overtaking manoeuvres. But um, it seems that from pole position, Luke Barton simply didn't have the best start. And uh, Will Fox is able to capitalise on that to get into the lead. But uh, Barton, I'm sure, will be determined to apply and whether he will be able to of course remains to be seen but um, Will Fox as we know is a quick driver and uh, getting past him will be easier said than done from Barton point of view the order remains the same though and Barton's going to try and go up the inside of the horseshoe can't quite do it there doesn't quite have enough pace but Will Fox manages to fend him off as they go into buttons and now into the top bend is still the race lead being held by Will Fox at the moment, but will it be as they head down to Billy's Blind? Luke Barton, is he going to switch to the inside, outside? No, he sticks in behind for one more lap at least. As Luke Barton still in behind the number 50. Will Fox, as he takes a defensive line, heading down into the hairpin. Still the five competitors here in the senior TKM. Still very much close together. A slight defensive line. He drifted out slightly wide from the race leader, Will Fox, there. And that could be an opportunity for Barton, but he couldn't quite capitalise upon it. All of the drivers so close together. Fast slap does actually belong to Jonathan Fox, who's in third. Third of the five, straight in the middle. So could he potentially even get past uh, second placed Luke Barton? Or could he catch up enough that should Luke Barton overtake Will Fox? Maybe Jonathan Fox can overtake his brother with Barton. Well, that would be something. But Will Fox is taking a defensive line once again into the uh, the horseshoe. All five of the drivers still so close together. Even Will Davis, who's at the back of the field and certainly is not a slow driver, he's not dropping off a lot. And um, all of the drivers still compact within the track. And um, that's really... Really good to see that close racing from the senior TKM. Might not be the biggest grid, but certainly very close racing as Luke Barton has another look up the inside there, but can't quite do anything about Will Fox's line. He is taking very defensive actions as Will Fox sticks it completely on the inside for the horseshoe. No window of opportunity there at all for Luke Barton, but now Luke Barton's going to try and go up the inside at the top end. He might have had a small amount of contact there. There's Jonathan Fox now up the inside. Does Jonathan Fox have the advantage on Will Fox as they make their way down? And in fact, Luke Barton is right at the back of the field now. Uh, Hunt and Davis getting past, but Hunt will now reclaim the position from Davis. Will Jonathan Fox try and go up the inside of Will Fox? Can't quite do anything about it there, but Will Fox currently leading the race is uh, Jonathan Fox in second position. Hunt is third. Uh, Davis is fourth, and Barton now right at the back of the field due to that small amount of contact at the top of the uh, top end. I spoke about how essential it is to get the speed from there down the pit straight towards Billy's, and so it is proved as Barton falls all the way down into fifth place but luckily this race is far from over still over seven minutes to go and will fox will he have to deploy more defensive driving to stop his own brother getting past jonathan fox haven't seen a lot of uh, really attacking driving from uh, jonathan fox so far throughout the day will fox the more experienced uh, in karting of the two but um Nonetheless, he's looking in good stead now. He's still holding the fastest lap, I believe, and uh, ahead of the rest of the field, apart from his brother. Still the five remain. Still so, so close. They're all separated by just over 0.6 of a second, so... All five of the carts, the order still Will Fox, Jonathan Fox, Derek Hunt, Will Davis 
And then Luke Barton, but Barton's going up the inside of Davis now, and that could be a change of position. And John Fox has gone up the inside of Will Fox as well. And Jonathan Fox claims the lead of the race for the first time today. It is Jonathan Fox who leads the race in a senior TKM. And Will Davis, meanwhile, has managed to actually get that move back from Luke Barton. So Barton now at the back of the field, despite having pole position and being realistically the favourite for the win of the race. I'm sure there's still more to see from Luke Barton. He'll be determined to find his way further up the field but uh, Jonathan Fox leads the way Will Fox is in second Hunt is in third Davis fourth and Barton in fifth the fastest lap belongs to the race leader Jonathan Fox which is set on lap three goes to show how compact the races are when they can't set any uh, faster laps than one set on lap three and now considering that we're on Lap number 12, and uh, there's a contact warning for the number 89. So, Will Davis, he's uh, got to watch out now in fourth position, defending from Luke Barton. He's going to try and guard the inside, and Barton this time, does he make the move stick? He's got the move done, but now can he just hold it going into the, uh, the horseshoe? He does manage to get ahead this time. So, Luke Barton is in fourth and ahead of Will Davis. Number 88 of John Fox leads the way then. Ahead of his brother, ahead of Hunt. Barton and Davis make up the rest of the field. Into the horseshoe for the 14th time. Four minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. And still any of these drivers could take the win of this one and there's still enough time and not enough space between them to honestly really struggle to know who's going to take the win contact warning being shown for Luke Barton this time and uh, maybe that's just the revenge he was taking on the number 89 of Will Davis who knows but both of those have contact warning they're now in fourth and fifth place Will Fox looking to respond to Jonathan Fox overtake, but Jonathan Fox, fair play because he's opening up that gap ever so slightly, about a tiny amount on that previous lap and holds the fastest lap, so John Fox deserves pace-wise to be at the front. And Will Fox attempting to get past him, but to no avail as things stand. Out of the S's and onto the Sturmy straight once more. This is now their 16th lap going round. As they make their way into the horseshoe, Luke Barton goes at the inside of Derek Hunt and he makes that move stick too. So Barton, having lost all of his uh, positions, is now back into third and he's gaining his way back through the field again. How far can he get by the end of the race? Will he find himself back up into the lead of the race again? Another change of position from the senior TKM really close good racing from the senior TKM then as they make their way onto the Sturmy straight once more here they head towards the hairpin and it's John Fox still leading the way from Will Fox Luke Barton Hunt and Davis is the order in terms of fastest lap it's Jonathan Fox who still holds a fast lap but it's an identical fastest lap to Derek Hunt and then it's Luke Barton, Will Fox and Davis in that order. So interesting how you could be quicker but uh, in fact then Hunt goes up the inside of Barton. Barton made contact with Will Fox and uh, loses a position to Hunt who saw the opportunity and went past but uh, well they goes to show right on the back of another driver make a bit of contact can really be a huge hindrance to your race and Barton's got to work up and get back into third once again. He's got more pace than Hunt at the moment but uh, with two minutes to go, not a huge amount of time to get back towards the front again where it looks like Jonathan Fox is starting to escape a little bit from his brother Will Fox who is in second. remains then 
as uh, they make their way into the top end. Not a huge amount of time left now. Jonathan Fox is heading to his first finals win here at Clay in the senior TKM. Just over one minute to go and the field separated by just over one second. Jonathan Fox looking pretty determined to win this one. Barton's managed to get past Hunt again and now is on the back of Will Fox. And now Barton versus Fox. Hunt is also going to try and follow Barton through if he can. Will Fox may have to sacrifice a couple of positions here. Will Davis is also going to try and follow through. Hunt is going to find his way up into third Barton into second Will Fox right at the back of the field but Barton up into second now he's got uh, 29 seconds to find the race leader Jonathan Fox who has driven heroically it must be said getting past his brother and Barton and maintaining the lead of the race doing a very good job at the moment but uh, will he be able to hold on? It looking promising for him. Six seconds left on the clock. And uh, two, one. There we go. Clock hit zero. So now it will be the last lap board up at the end of this one. Not long left to go. Before it will be a win for Jonathan Fox. Luke Barton is closing him in. But he's probably not going to have enough time here. Hunt is having to defend from Will Davis as uh, Will Fox, having lost the position, would he be able to get back in it? Again, this happened exactly the same in, uh, I think it was Heat 2, where Will Fox just fell to the back and just wasn't quite able to catch up to the rest of the field. Bit of contact there, Davis uh, scrubbing the rear bumper of Hunt and certainly knocking him a bit there, but uh, didn't seem to distract either of the drivers too much seems that this might just about be the finalized order but it's going to be Jonathan Fox ahead of Luke Barton Hunt Davis and Will Fox is still the rest of the field as they head into the top end for the final time checkered flag out and ready for Jonathan Fox to take his first ever finals win at Clay Pigeon and uh, Luke Barton does take second place Hunt takes third just about ahead of Will Davis Will Fox takes fifth and what a close race between the senior TKM. Some of the bigger grids were significantly less interesting than that race, despite having more drivers in. And uh, Will Davis there <laughs> driving his cart very slowly down the Sturmy Straight. Seems that that might just about be enough, but uh, got to the checkered flag at least. And that is what counts. But. Um, there we go then, Jonathan Fox taking the win ahead of Luke Barton. Brilliant drive from Jonathan Fox and by all of the drivers there to supply that entertainment. And a really brilliant final from the senior TKM as the penultimate race of the day comes to a close.
now then we move our attention to the final race of the day and the grid for the junior max final is as follows Bradley Shepard on pole having acclaimed 86 points throughout the day Angus Fry is alongside him on the front row Harry Wilson Brown alongside Michael Goodburn on row two and Fraser Danoon right at the back uh, but of course five drivers Fraser Danoon really doesn't have a huge disadvantage being right at the back of the field considering that um, they are so close together of course take the senior TKM for example they all finished within almost a second of each other so um, could it be as close again in the final race of the day and we are now underway with the final race it is the junior max final for round six Bradley Shepard in the number 53 leads the way with Angus Fry in second, Harry Wilson Brown third, Michael Goodburn in fourth and Fraser Zanoon fifth place. Just as the grid suggested is how they will go across the line now but with a few differences. Wilson Brown overtaking Fry, Zanoon in fact getting past Goodburn which has been a common theme throughout the day. Goodburn uh, despite usually finishing ahead of Danoon. It doesn't have the best start and Danoon usually manages to get past uh, Goodburn uh, in the early stages here but Angus Fry you'd imagine on the results of the uh, first and second heat that uh, Angus Fry would be storming to victory here potentially but uh, Fry has really suffered from uh, the end of heat two to heat three and onwards and uh, well let's see if in the final he can make a difference here because at the moment the number 46 isn't it yeah Angus Fry he's struggling with that pace especially to catch up with the race leader Bradley Shepard who could be on his way to victory here in the number 53 his only competitor throughout the day realistically has been Fry Wilson Brown has simply not been as quick as the top two uh, although I'm sure he's very capable of doing that. Uh, Wilson Brown, a talented young driver, but uh, at the moment keeping Angus Fryer bait, again, doesn't take no talent at all to do that as Goodburn goes up the inside of Danoon to reclaim that position. I said that that was the case. Uh, Goodburn reclaiming the position off of Danoon, and so it is proved. of the race Bradley Shepard though somewhat in a pocket of air as he uh, does try to escape from Harry Wilson Brown and Angus Fry Michael Goodburn and Fraser Danoon in fourth and fifth and as the day draws to a close I'd like to bring your attention once again to the Twitter page, hashtag CPKT2016. Get involved, say how your day has gone with the uh, drivers who are now packing away and getting ready to leave. Just tweet how your day went, some positive comments towards the club or how your day was. And uh, hashtag CPKT2016. Also make sure, while we're on the subject of social media, Facebook page, Clay Pitch and Cart Club. Uh, give us a like and you'll be updated with all the latest happenings and news here at Clay Pigeon Car Club. But, uh, turning our attention back to the race and um, the battle for second, certainly the strongest one out there. Harry Wilson Brown battling Angus Fry with Fry still right on the tail of the number 27 as they make their way towards the horseshoe and Angus Fry on the rear bumper of Wilson Brown which is not what you necessarily expect to be happening uh, had you listened to the first heat uh, with uh, Angus Fry strolling victory 
But uh, now he's trying to get past Lewis and Brown. Whereas, uh, meanwhile, Goodburn is looking to catch up Fry, and he is doing so as well. 0.23 seconds he closed in by on that previous lap. So Fry might have to be careful, but uh, in attacking too hard, he might end up defending with Michael Goodburn. A strong young novice is heading towards third place, Angus Fry, and is closing in that gap. But uh, Friday Shepherd leading the way with a 2.75 gap now back to Harry Wilson Brown already looking like it could be only one winner here and the man in the orange helmet with the number 53 cart who is heading around the horseshoe now is uh, certainly doing a good job of um, holding that race lead as things stand. Seven minutes and 11 seconds left on the clock and uh, while it hasn't got the excitement of the senior TKM final the ferocity in the uh, battle that, the, that was the senior TKM final remains in the battle for second and now Angus Fry does find his way past Harry Wilson Brown change four second position Wilson Brown looking to respond unable to do so immediately but can he do so in the near future or indeed the far future if you're counting towards the end of the race as that yellow flags are waving for a cart who's off just behind the marshal post but um, by process of elimination should be Fraser Danoon there uh, unusual place to go off that's for sure just on the entrance to buttons uh, back where the old commentary box my old home used to be pulls off directly in front of it but uh, there we go, one retirement of the five. Hopefully we'll see no more uh, by the end of this race as the marshal comes to recover Fraser Danoon's number 14. But Bradley Shepherd does lead the way still and with a very comfortable margin to play with. Second place, Angus Fry ahead of Wilson Brown who are then slightly ahead of Goodburn. Goodburn who's in fourth position looking to try and catch up with Wilson Brown and uh, well he's overtaken Wilson Brown on the third heat. See if he can do so again. What was Angus Fry? Not quite sure but uh, we know Goodburn a capable young novice. Let's see what he can do now. Catches up the rest of the drivers. Eight minutes and 50 seconds have gone, meaning that there are just four minutes and five seconds to go. Not a huge 
future battle going on in this race. The closest battle is for third. Wilson Brown versus Goodburn. Goodburn trying to get out the inside and he does manage to do so. Wilson Brown loses another position and Goodburn now settles into third place which his race pace uh, puts him deserving to be there. Bradley Shepard, the number 53, leading the race and has the fastest lap as well, 35.5. No one can match that. The next fast is a 35.7 by Angus Fries in second. Michael Goodburn has a uh, 35.75 and a 35.93 from Wilson Brown. So it's relatively close in terms of uh, best lap times, but there's an obvious pace order. And uh, currently, the field order is that very order. Much changing on track then with two minutes and 15 seconds to go. It seems that the order is more or less sorting itself out. Wilson Brown overtaking Goodburn might be the most likely change in order to propose, but um, even that could appear relatively unlikely considering that Goodburn has been catching Wilson Brown over the last few laps and now has overtaken and the gap between each of the drivers is opening up ever so slightly. Gap between uh, Bradley Shepard and Angus Fry is 4.75 of a second. Six. Angus Fry behind Bradley Shepard is now over five seconds behind, but has a 2.5 second gap back to Michael Goodburn. So he's seemingly got that second place guaranteed now. And it seems that most of the drivers are pretty settled into their positions. Bradley Shepard will be on his way to a third consecutive victory here. For the junior max the only victory he avoided today was the uh, first heat which of course angus fry won but uh, less than a minute to go and the junior max final will be on its last lap where bradley shepherd should be able to take a uh, victory here but uh, still good burn ahead of wilson brown wilson brown hasn't been able to catch up with good burn since his uh, overtake good burn actually closing in on angus fry slightly well that's just a sign of fatigue by fry it's not long left also force grip in the tires this leaping due to uh, it being this long a race the tires could really be scrubbed away especially if this is the uh, third or maybe even fourth meeting of using them probably third, although you stretch into four meetings, that's for sure, but uh, the wind is very low now, it was actually stronger this morning, and uh, not very much wind to propel the drivers and persuade them down the pit straight for the final few times here, and it is the last lap of the race now, Bradley Shepard on his way to what has always seemed like a fairly obvious victory that is going to occur, Bradley Shepard no doubt that from um, about even like lap 10 it was rather obvious that uh, Bradley Shepard was heading towards only one position and you can't fault him for it he has driven brilliantly Bradley Shepard the number 53 here he comes into the top end he'll make his way down across the finish line and take the win well done to Bradley Shepard Angus Fry will take second position the, the field was in fact beginning to close in on itself with a good burn catching up to fry and wilson brown catching up to good uh, significantly catching up on the last lap good burns fry but not enough time left for any changes to be done and that does conclude today's action here at clay pigeon car club the final standings are the following bradley shepherd taking the win over angus fry 
Michael Goodburn finishing in third. Fourth place, Harry Wilson Brown with Fraser Danoon, the only non finisher for the Junior Max final. Final race of the day, race number 28. So that concludes all the action here at Clay Pigeon today. Thanks so much to everyone who came and who turned up today. Spectators, uh, marshals, officials, all the racers, of course. And uh, wouldn't be complete without all of the said people uh, appearing. So thanks to everyone for that. The next meeting will be on the 11th of September, round number seven. It's sure to be a good one. I've been your commentator for today, Sam Hunt, and I'll see you all next month. Take care.